Well, it was only going to be a matter of time until I did this video. It's still mad to me that we have 96 tracks in the game. This screenshot from the original game on the Wii U ended up only being a third of what we got, which is just mental to me. But yeah, as most Mario Kart 8 Deluxe content creators have been doing, I will be doing a ranking of the 96 tracks myself. And I'm basing my ranking off of my own personal tier list. So I'll be putting this video into different sections, going from F tier all the way up to double S tier. And if you're wondering why the tier list has a double S, tier it just kind of came with this and i couldn't really be asked to change it also definitely let me know your least and most favorite tracks in the comments i'm always interested to see the general thoughts of the community anyways i won't bore you with any more of the details let's go ahead and start at the bottom of the barrel and take a look at f tier Okay, I'll go ahead and immediately answer the question. What do I think is the worst track in the game? You might already know the answer if you personally know me or if you watch the Toad Circuit video, but drumroll please. Yep this track and i'm probably the only guy who sees this as the worst track in the game so let me break it down for you the main reason i don't like this track is that it's extremely boring to me the one thing i don't want a track to make me feel is boredom and out of any track in the game this one by far just bores me the most now the one thing this track is supposed to have going for it is its whole multiple paths gimmick look at that there's a whole gazillion amount of different routes you can take in a race that's so unique and strategic now let's actually shorten it down to the ones that are actually useful yeah it's pretty bad the bridge is always going to be your go-to as it's the fastest and on rare occasion you'd want to take the cave path as it's a little bit slower with the trade-off of having some coins in there but nine times out of ten you'll only be taking the routes with the bridge so that immediately makes the track ten times more boring and i don't want to hear a thing about that damn egg that thing is just a heavily watered down version of the calamari desert train the calamari desert train is funny yet the yoshi egg has not provided me with an ounce of comedic value Overall, this track just bores me to death. I have not had one entertaining experience on it, and for me, it just has absolutely nothing to offer. Every time I'm playing it, I'm just trying my best to get it out of the way as fast as possible, because bro, I would quite literally rather be playing Toad's Turnpike than this. Toad's Turnpike genuinely can reliably give me a more fun time than Yoshi Valley can. The only improvement I think they could have made is keeping that one called Turn Skip from the N64. I think that would have spiced up the track enough to potentially rank it up from not being the worst track in the game but alas of course we know how strict lakitu is in the base game i genuinely think if yoshi valley was a booster course pass track they would have kept that shortcut in hence making the track better kind of like they did with the gap jump on mushroom gorge and the double cut on dk summit but yeah we didn't get that to leave this track in my eyes to be by far the most boring track in the game which to me that just makes it the worst okay that's my reasoning for why yoshi valley is the worst track in the game out of the way yoshi valley defenders flame me all you want in the comments it's not going to make the track any less boring for me anyways for the other tracks in f tier i doubt i'll be having to go into too much detail because for the most part these are going to be commonly agreed on and i will just be stating the obvious anyways with that being said for the second worst track in the game i've gone for sunset wilds i find it funny how in the middle of all the brilliant tracks that they released from waves four to six they decided to drop by far the worst one in the entire dlc slap bang in the middle of all of them which definitely sucks because this track unlike yoshi valley actually actually had potential to be pretty good. First off, the graphics are at the level of how bad they were in Wave 1, which is pretty shocking if you compare it to basically any other track in Wave 5. And also, if you compare the minimap from the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version and the GBA version, you can see that they just watered it down so much for no apparent reason. They very clearly just lazily put this one together, which is a real shame because this was definitely a fan favorite and a highly anticipated track to return from Super Circuit. It definitely deserved the ribbon road treatment but it was given nothing but a glow down very very tough on the sunset wilds enjoyers really the final track to make it on the worst tracks in the game podium is going to be the third worst baby park well uh it's a loop and I'm not exactly a big fan of the chaos it brings, unlike the many other people that are. That's all really. Sorry to all the baby park lovers out there. I don't have too much more to say. Rank 93 is going to be MC3. I hate how for the three mainline games it's been in, there has been zero attempts to make this track any better. It's just stuck with the good old SNES look, which is definitely a shame because we've seen what Nintendo can do if we actually let them sit down and cook with an SNES remake. But yeah, SNES Mario Circuit 3 doesn't achieve anything. The 
only bit of praise I can give it is that doing the many off-road shortcuts it has can be fun, but that isn't really saying much. Rank 92 is Dry Dry Desert. Well, it sure is a desert and it sure is dry. Well, I mean, not so much because they did add an oasis section at the end. This track is just not offering much. It's super long, which doesn't help its case either. A track has got to be pretty good for it to be that long. This track does have a lot of shortcuts, similar to MC3, but they're bigger, and bigger means better, I guess, so congratulations, Dry Dry Desert. You're just better than MC3. Rank 91 is going to be Toad's Turnpike. Well, it's certainly better than Yoshi Valley, but that doesn't mean it's any good. At the end of the day, it's just a very boring figure eight circuits with very slow and avoidable traffic in your way. I guess there's anti-gravity and you can fly over the finish line, which is kind of cool, but they're both slower and don't really do enough to make this track any better. Rank 90 goes to this game's Mario circuits. It's yet another boring figure eight circuit, except there's shortcuts, there's a glider, and you can go upside down, ooh. Overall, it's still very boring and every single turn is extremely repetitive. Rank 89 is N64 Rainbow Road, or Trainbow as many people call it. This track is so incredibly boring, it is quite literally just a road made out of rainbow that you drive on and absolutely nothing more. The one good thing about this track is the fact it's so short. It takes about a minute to finish this track, so the fact you can just get it out of the way very quickly genuinely bumps this track up a few spots for me. Rank Rank 88 is Rock Rock Mountain. Half of this track is just gliding, which gets old very, very fast. And the bits where you can actually drive aren't doing anything special. You've got the measly cave section at the beginning, and then the straightaway with the very easily avoidable boulders at the end. Also, the graphics could have been better. Imagine if they made the forest area of this track look properly nice. I think that would have been sick. Overall, this track just isn't doing much other than showing off the gliding mechanic, which was what it was intended for in Mario Kart 7, so it's whatever, I guess. Rank 87 is going to be GBA Mario Circuits. For the most part, this is a pretty boring, faithful GBA remake, but they added some nice touches. Making this one section anti-gravity is okay. It's not really doing a whole lot to make the track any better. Adding this glider section was pretty cool, though, letting you do a cool turn skip at the end, which I've always enjoyed doing online. Unfortunately, this track probably has the worst shroomless shortcut of all time, which absolutely drags it down a little bit in the rankings. Rank 86 is going to be a bit of a hot take, but I've gone with Yoshi Circuit. Yet yeah, straight up, I think driving on a track shaped like a Yoshi feels horrible. I'm sorry guys, I just have a personal vendetta against Yoshi tracks and I just can't find myself enjoying them most of the time. Except for one of them, which we'll get onto later. But uh, Yoshi fans, please do not come for me. But yeah, this track has a kind of cool waterfall shortcut. That's kind of it though. This whole track's gimmick is supposed to be, you know, being in the shape of a Yoshi, and I've never really been a fan of that. And to finally top off F tier is going to be Rank 85, Mario Kart Stadium, the first track in the entire game. I mean, this track is just very long and boring. It has a few shortcuts here and there, and does a good enough job of being a starter track and showing off the new anti-gravity mechanic. The only exciting part is when I get to do Motion Glider at the very end of each lap, but every other part of this track just feels like an absolute chore to get through. Okay, so to kick off D tier, we're going to start with rank 84, Cheeseland. This track, unlike Sunset Wilds, actually did have a glow up, but it's still not all that good. The track design is actually somewhat okay. It's very twisty, which can add a little bit of challenge to it. And there are some little cheese bumps on this track, which you can get some trick boosts from, but I've found these more to get in the way than actually helpful. So they're a nice little touch, I guess, for a cheese theme track, but for the most part, they just kind of annoy me when I play. Cheeseland can be pretty fun to drive, but the problem is is that this track is arguably the worst track in the entire game to front run. So most of the time when I'm playing this, I don't find myself front running. I'm just kind of messing about in the back fishing for items. Overall, I've just never really been a fan of this one personally. Rank 83 and the first tour track on this list is going to be LA Laps. First of all, let's go over the things I do actually like about this track. I really like the beach section at the start. To me, it just kind of screams Los Angeles. And I also find it super enjoyable to drive. But then after that, I don't really enjoy this track all that much. You get to glide through a baseball stadium very briefly on lap two, but if you compare it to the Bernabeu Stadium on Madrid, it just absolutely pales in comparison, I'm sorry. And then for the most part, after that, this track is just kind of generic roads. That is until lap three, where they just kind of chuck you in an oil field for some reason, which kind of confuses me. Are the oil fields like one of the main attractions of Los Angeles? 
I mean, let me know down in the comments because my Los Angeles knowledge might just not be up to par. But yeah, this track, in my opinion, needed more of the beach and less of the bland roads and less of the oil fields. Rank 82 is Excite Bike Arena. Well, I mean, need I say any more? This track is quite literally just a beefed up baby park. But I mean, in all seriousness, this track isn't all bad. The ramp patterns are randomized every single time you play online, so it helps to spice things up a little bit and adds a little bit of a skill ceiling for doing ramp strats and whatnot. But on the other hand, this track at the end of the day is still very, very bland. It's just a whole lot of tricking and taking the odd shortcut here and there and not much more. Rank 81 is going to be Choco Mountain. Right, first off, this track looks more like plain old dirt than chocolate. Nintendo should really be taking it up with Willy Wonka before they decide to make a chocolate-based track. And I mean, jokes aside, for the most part, this track is just very, very boring. I kind of like the little cave section they added. The crystals lighting it up look very, very pretty. Other than that, this track has a few stage hazards and one shortcut at the end, so it's just doing the bare minimum and nothing more. Rank 80 is the second tour track on this list. It is Paris Promenade. I know this track seems and probably is objectively a bit more bland and repetitive than Los Angeles. I mostly prefer Paris a little bit due to my personal preference. I quite like both of the monuments you can drive through and also the option of the two paths. If you go to the left or the right on lap three, it's faster, but if you keep on going under the Eiffel Tower, sure it's slower, but you can get an item and even some extra coins from it. I highly value stuff like that in Mario Kart tracks, finding a use for both the faster and the slower paths on the track. But even with all that praise, as I said, this track is very bland and for the most part, you're just kind of driving on the roads of Paris with the occasional monument to pass by. Rank 79 is Sherbetland. Now, I know this track has its fair share of fans, so let me explain myself on why I personally don't like this track before you start coming on a headhunt for me. This track is very slippery, obviously. It's a nice theme track and I don't feel like the track design complements that very well. Now, in general, I'm not exactly a fan of slippery tracks, but they can be pretty good. Spoilers for higher up in the list, but I really like Rosalina's Ice World. I think it's an excellent track, therefore the slippery physics don't do much to put me off that. On the contrary, Sherbet Land in my eyes has an extremely simplistic track design. Adding the slippery physics onto that just makes it not all that enjoyable for me. One bit of praise that I can give it though is the underwater sections are pretty cool that they added. The one at the start is nice, but it doesn't really matter because it's like 10 times slower. I can't remember the last time I've used it unless I've accidentally fallen in or something. But the one at the end is quite nice to have, having both the options of either going underwater or staying on the top. I'm a big fan of that, but overall, the track just feels like a little bit of a slippery mess and... I'm not the biggest fan. Rank 78 is Wario's Goldmine. I remember back on MK Wii, the original version of this track, it used to feel a lot more exhilarating. The bumps were way more harsh and the track was a lot more tighter with more places to fall off. And the minecarts actually used to spin you out. You take all of that away and you basically get the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's version of this track. Without all those risks, this track becomes 10 times more boring and generic. There is still that cool little alternative route you can take at the end, but in this game, they made it slow lower so it doesn't feel near as cool to go through. Overall, they just kind of watered this track down so much in its difficulty that for me it took away a lot of the enjoyment I had in it. Rank 77 is going to be Merry Mountain. While this track certainly is the jolliest in the game, at the time I'm recording this it's January so that doesn't really matter anymore and I have to come to terms with the fact that this track is pretty mid. All this track really has is that one top path you can go on to nab some extra coins and that one big shortcut at the end and other than that it's a very simplistic Christmas track. I'm never really picking it unless it is quite literally December 25th. Rank 76 is Bone Dry Dunes. This track is definitely a case of there was a good amount of thought behind it, but the execution was absolutely horrific. The off-road section in the middle and at the end of the track has never not felt absolutely horrible to drive on. The left path might as well not even be there as it's just slower and it's just a continuation of the horrible, bumpy and slippery road that I was driving on before. I'd much rather stick with a somewhat nice feeling anti-gravity path to the right. The bits of the track where you just drive on regular old road is somewhat okay, and the top path at the end is a nice little touch. If you're able to get up there, you can get some extra coins and an item. But overall, this track for the most part just feels completely unsatisfying to play. Rank 75 is going to be the funny train track, Calamari Desert. Well, the train is certainly funny on this track, but I don't feel like it completely stops you in your path as much as it did in previous games. Now, I'll be real, this track 100% would have been F 
left here, if not for them integrating the train tracks and the tunnel as an actual part of the track itself. I love going through the tunnel near the end of lap two and having to just squeeze by as the train goes past. That's great and everything, but other than that cool little addition, it's still the same old boring calamari desert. It's still nice to see them spice it up just a little bit to move it out of F tier for me though. Rank 74 is going to be SNES Rainbow Road. Kind of like Trainbow, this track is just kind of road that happens to be rainbow, but there's a little bit more going on this time. The Thwomps are genuinely a good track hazard, especially with how tight the track gets towards the end, and being able to play around them and get some trick boosts is also pretty cool. There is also a cool little ramp shortcut you can do, which I always enjoy pulling off when I'm playing online. That's just about all this track has to offer. Overall, for the most part, it's still a classic, boring old SNES remake with not much to offer. Rank 73 goes to Mute City. This track definitely has its fans, but I can tell you for a fact that I'm not one of them. I'm definitely a fan of driving on these things that give you coins. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but, you know, I like them. And being able to do the shortcuts at the end without a shroom is pretty cool. Adds a bit of a skill ceiling to this track, which I like. What puts me off for the most part is the fact that half this track is just kind of driving straight on boost panels, which gets pretty boring. This track mostly contains very simplistic driving other than some of the turns near the end. Overall, this track just doesn't entertain me all that much, and I'd much rather be playing the other F-Zero track that's in this game. For rank 72, I've gone with Sky High Sunday. Just like Excite Bike, this track is just a beefed up baby park, but I'm actually a little bit more okay with this one. My favorite parts of this track, funnily enough, are the only two turns on this track. Being able to get perfect tricks off of the first turn on the stairs always feels super satisfying to do. And there's a cool little shortcut so you can do on the ice cream turn at the end. Thanks to this track having floaty physics, you can use a mushroom to just skip half the turn, which is always super fun to pull off. But other than that, as I said, it is just a beefed up baby park. It's just a whole lot of driving straight and tricking for the most part, so I can't give it too much credit. Rank 71 is Tokyo Blur. I've seen a lot of people rank this as the worst tour track and have it in their bottom five, which is something I highly disagree with. I mean, don't get me wrong, this track is definitely nothing special, but I wouldn't go so far as to say it's anywhere near bottom five. This track is pretty simplistic and boring, but it has a cool little shortcut you can do, and the ending section always makes for hectic moments, which can be fun. Overall, it's not an amazing track by any means, but I don't think it's so bad to the level that people make it out to be. Rank 70 is going to be Electrodrome. This track definitely has its good qualities, and I completely understand why this track has its fans. Me, personally, I just can't find myself enjoying this one as much as other people. I definitely can't deny the track looks stunning, and the music is nothing short of a bop. What brings this track down for me is that big shortcut at the end. I actually find this track somewhat enjoyable to drive, but having that massive shortcut at the end, which the track entirely revolves around in competitive play, makes the way I have to play this track entirely different. It doesn't matter if I'm driving out of my absolute arse. If I don't have a mushroom for that shortcut, I might as well just leave on the spot. Also, that glider section at the start seems pretty pointless. It might as well just be a normal old ramp. Bit of a nitpick, but something I've always found weird about this track. Okay, and to top off D tier for rank 69. Oh my days. I promised you I did not rank this track at the funny number on purpose. I've only just realized that I did as I was writing the script for this video, but uh, it's the one you've all been waiting for. It's Toad Circuit, baby. Now, I already have a video highlighting my reasons as to why I think this track is not so bad, even if for like half of it, I am taking the mick. But even so, I'll give you a quick rundown on why this track certainly isn't the worst track in the game, like many people make it out to be. As I said with Trainbow earlier, if a track is not fun to play, the shorter it is, the better. And Toad Circuit, to my knowledge, is one of the shortest tracks in the game. Although I could play this track for eternity, but I mean, that's just me. There are two very cool shortcuts at the end. The ramp shortcuts, although super hard to do, can actually be done shroomless. It's always super satisfying to watch the world record pull it off. And because of the pipe placements in the last shortcuts, it actually makes being able to do it with one mushroom actually quite challenging. And of course, the best thing about this track is the motherfucking toad balloons, undoubtedly. So this track definitely has its good qualities, which I appreciate, unlike a lot of other people. But unfortunately, this track is still objectively kind of bad. The quality is very subpar if you compare it to the other tracks in the game. And there are other tracks I would rather be playing, especially in a competitive setting. Yes, I know. I finally criticized the ghost of all Mario Kart tracks. Go ahead and unsubscribe for my outrageous opinions. But even so, I can't hide from the fact that this track only has like three turns and is a little bit of a standard basic starter course. But even so, me ranking this track 69th is far better than most of the lists I've seen ranking it as the worst track in the game. So it goes to show that I really do value the good qualities this track does actually have to 
offer. Toad Circuit, please never change. And I mean never change. Nintendo, I want to see a faithful Toad Circuit remake for every Mario Kart game from now on. I mean, who's with me, guys? Come on. Anyways, for the people that aren't clicking off the video now that they've heard my opinion on Toad Circuits, that'll finish off D tier. We're now going to move on to C tier, where the tracks are pretty all right. Not anything special by any means, but they're pretty solid tracks that get the job done. So without further ado, let's have a pop at C tier. Okay, the first track to make C tier, rank 68, is going to be this game's Rainbow Road. There are some things I really like about this track, but then other things that just make it significantly worse for me. So let's talk about them. Firstly, I want to point out the good in this track, and that is that I absolutely adore the space station theme they went for. It makes complete sense since Rainbow Road has always been set in space, and I always love it when a Rainbow Road track has a little bit more to it than well, just being a Rainbow Road. But there are a few things that just stop this track from being all that good for me, most notably being the cannon boxes. Quick explanation for those who don't know, but item boxes on a cannon set are completely broken in this game, and that is because the items you pull in this game are determined by how far ahead the driver in first is, rather than your placement. Now, there are two other tracks with pretty notable cannon item sets, being Big Blue and DK Summit, and in my opinion, the cannon item sets are much less of an issue on those tracks, mainly because on Big Blue, you only really go through it once, and on DK Summit, you do go through it three times but you aren't given any access to any double boxes so in my opinion these item sets are still very broken but they don't exactly decide your entire race now rainbow roads cannon set on the other hand has double boxes and you do go through it three times on all three laps and from what i've experienced online the entire race usually comes down to this item set been practicing this track and you're front running doesn't matter, the guy in third just pulled a bill from the broken set and is doing the broken bill strat placed very conveniently not long after he pulled it. Overall, I think the space station idea is pretty nice, but the cannon set ruins playing this track for me online. And personally, to me, this track can feel pretty mid to drive. There's a whole lot of brake drifting on 150cc, bear in mind, which doesn't really make the track any more challenging, which is what I think they were going for. It just makes the track easy, but a little bit more annoying to play. But the reason it does get C tier and one spot over the mighty toad circuit is as i said i do rate the space station idea quite a lot and i think with the right execution this track could have been probably amazing but uh actually playing the track is a whole different story unfortunately okay for rank 67 i've decided to go with ryan's land Could you tell me how you answer? okay in all seriousness this track is pretty okay and not anything amazing but the glow up it got and other nice features certainly makes it a solid entry now when Wave 2 released, this was when Nintendo really started to ease up on how strict Lakitu used to be, most notably by leaving the Mushroom Gorge Gap Jump in the game, which many people expected to be counted as out of bounds. Now, there's also a very similar shortcut like this on Snowland, cutting off a very big turn, which doesn't really seem like it was intentionally added, but Nintendo just kind of rolled with it, which is pretty cool. Other than that, I think being able to trick off of the cracks on the ice lake is pretty nice, and of course the penguins are adorable, there's no denying that. A fun fact, if you count up all the penguins on the track, you'll come up to a result of 29 penguins. Don't go and fact check that, just believe me, I'm right. But I mean, overall, this track isn't groundbreaking, but I mean, it's okay. Got the odd shortcut here and there and some nice penguins to look at. Rank 66 is going to be Sky Garden. This track 100% should have been so much better, but I still like this track a lot more than other people. Being able to get a perfect super bounce off of the leaves and the mushroom always feels pretty satisfying. And being able to do the shortcut at the end is pretty cool. Overall, driving and playing this track online for the most part is pretty fun to me. But in track design, 100% this is the worst version of Sky Garden we've had. And it was just lazily ported from Tor, which is a real shame because this track could have easily been very good. But instead, it's just kind of okay in my eyes and gets a pretty comfortable seat here. Also, on a side note, why did they make the clouds look like milk? I always found that to be a little bit weird. For rank 65, I've gone with Shroom Ridge. Well, at the time this track released, least, it was definitely the best car theme track in the game, because the only other one was Toad's Turnpike. But nowadays, it's not quite to the level of Moonview Highway, which we'll get onto later. Other than the fact this track is cursed with Wave 1 graphics, it's still a solid little car track for the most part. Nothing really changed from the DS version, except they added a glider section into the off-road, which was nice, and they added an extra little shortcut so you can do at the end. So for the most part, this was just a faithful little DS remake with some nice little touches added on. It was pretty decent on the 
the DS and it stayed pretty decent on this game too. For rank 64, I've gone with Royal Raceway. Okay, first thing I want to mention, I could not care less that you can't drive around the castle anymore. I never played this track on the N64, so that's never really been a problem for me. But uh, yeah, this track is pretty okay. There's a lot of twisty turns, which is always fun. Plenty of off-road shortcuts to catch up with like most circuit looking tracks have. A nice little glider section, I guess. And there's a pretty cool ramp shortcut that you can do shroomless, which I always find fun to do. Overall, this track isn't really doing too much, but then again, it's not really doing anything wrong either. It's going to be one of those tracks that's just pretty okay, and I don't really have much to go into detail about. It just gets the job done. Nice job, Royal Raceway. <laughs> Rank 63 is going to be New York Minute. New York Minute, in my opinion, is a pretty good representation of the city. Getting to drive through the rainy city at nighttime and getting to go through Central Park and take some off-road shortcuts. Is this track doing anything special, though? Mm, not exactly. I can't really criticize it too much, though. As to my knowledge, this was the first ever tour track to be released alongside Tokyo Blur. The driving on this one is pretty basic for the most part. The one bit of praise I can give it is that I enjoy taking these shroomless shortcuts you can do on lap one and three. So in my opinion, this track does a decent job at representing New York in track form. It isn't doing anything special, but overall, I think it's a pretty decent entry to the roster. Although if you are actually from New York and you think I'm waffling, please uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Rank 62 is going to be a DS Mario Circuit. Well, I mean, going by Mario Circuit standards, this track is undoubtedly S tier. But if we actually compare it to basically every other track in the game, it gets a solid C tier from me. Now, there's a lot more going on on this track compared to other Mario Circuit tracks. The piranha plants shoot fireballs at you, which you have to avoid. They added a really nice looking forest section, and there are actually some really challenging corners towards the end, which are always quite fun. This track is still a Mario Circuit track, so there are some pretty basic areas of this track that get quite boring. But compared to the other Mario Circuits in this game, it's still a pretty big step up, so give it credit for that. Rank 61 is going to be Donut Plains 3. Now, I don't actually think this track is all that good if we're just going off of its track design, which for the most part is pretty basic. But I will not lie to you, I am pretty shamelessly biased towards this one because this track is probably one of my better ones in competitive play. Although in fairness, this track does have some good bits about it. For example, I think being able to drive underwater benefits this track quite a bit because it does allow you to do a few shortcuts that you would not be able to do otherwise. Pretty much, Donut Plains 3 is an okay track for the most part. Bit of a boring one at times, but it's definitely one of the better SNES tracks they could have brought back. Rank 60 is going to be Berlin Byways. This is a decent little city track. A very large chunk of this track is just plain old road with a few cars here and there, which genuinely makes me feel like I'm playing a worse version of Shroom Ridge. But I always enjoy the parts of this track where you get to drive through the monuments. Going through the Brandenburg Gate is always fun and is definitely very suiting for there to be an item set there. By the way, I apologize if I've absolutely butchered that pronunciation. My favorite part of this track has got to be driving driving past the Berlin Wall though, with some added womps that will try and squish you on your way past. Also, I only remember this while revisiting this track for the list, but on 200cc you can actually shroom off the womp and do a really cool looking shortcut. I don't know if it's any faster, but I mean, it looks cool, deserved a mention I think. Overall, Berlin is actually pretty good, mostly brought down by its generic road sections, which I never really find myself enjoying that much. Rank 59 is going to be London Loop. Okay guys, this track isn't that bad, but oh my days, it should have been so much better. For starters, let's go over the good bits that I actually like about this track. One thing that I have noticed is that, in my opinion, it especially feels like I am driving around London, with certain touches such as the iconic double-decker buses and the telephone boxes added around the track. Although one improvement I would make is they probably should have made the double-decker buses actually move, kind of like they did with Coconut Mall. I absolutely adore the section next to Buckingham Palace, and the chain chomps playing around in the grass to act as the Royal Corgis is pretty nice. I also think being able to drive next to the River Thames is a nice touch. Although I don't really know what a chain chop is doing swimming around in there. It's very, very dirty. Now, the main problem with this track, like a lot of other tour tracks, is that this track is a whole lot of road and not really much else. Especially the straightaway on lap two and three, which is just unnecessarily long in my opinion. But what annoys me the most is that they could have done so much more with the monuments on this track. Now, let's talk about Big Ben. Everyone knows Big Ben, right? One of the most iconic parts about London. Playing this 
track. We only ever get to see it in the background every now and then, but it so could have easily been made as an actual part of the track itself. Now, Big Ben is a very big clock, right? And there just so happens to be a track themed around being inside of a clock in this game. You see where I'm going with this. They could have very easily just ported track parts from TikTok Clock and made a section of the track entirely dedicated to Big Ben, which I would have been delighted with. In my opinion, this was definitely the biggest missed opportunity. This track was also lacking in a glider section, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but the London Eye was quite literally built for a glider section. I mean, imagine being able to glide through the London Eye with a view of the River Thames below you. That would have been so cool. But alas, that was yet again a pretty big missed opportunity by Nintendo. London Loop is still solid in my opinion, but I genuinely think it might be one of Nintendo's biggest missed opportunities when it comes to track design. And I think it had the potential to be the best tour track in the game, but unfortunately it just comes nowhere near that and it's just kind of mid comfortable seat here. Rank 58 is going to be Water Park. Being the second track in the entire game, unsurprisingly, Water Park is a somewhat basic track that doesn't really give me much to talk about. My main takeaway from it is that the driving is okay. I enjoy really trying to squeeze out two purple mini turbos on the massive anti-gravity turn, and the glider section at the end is pretty cool, letting you glide under a ferris wheel. Water Park did what London Loop couldn't, which is quite funny to me. Yeah, pretty much Water Park can consistently give me a serviceable time. It's okay, it isn't horrendous, but it isn't that good either. Unsurprisingly, it's just a pretty basic mushroom cup track that doesn't really accomplish much, but it's okay. I can have a decent time on it. Rank 57 is going to be Sweet Sweet Canyon. This is another mushroom cup track, so like Water Park, it's pretty simplistic and won't give me the utmost to talk about. But yeah, this track certainly works. I like the two different routes that you can take. They're basically just as fast as each other, so you can get use out of both of them. Shrooming through the donuts at the end definitely has has its moments as well, I guess. I think I'd probably enjoy this track a lot more if there wasn't that big of a shortcut at the end, though. I gotta say, though, 100% they absolutely nailed the visuals on this track. I feel like I'm playing from Sugar Rush from Wreck-It Ralph, which is a very, very good thing. I think a candy-themed track is always gonna look stunning to me, and I'm a big fan of that style of track. And I didn't mention it, but that's also one of my favourite things about Sky High Sunday. So yeah, I definitely enjoy looking at this track, but then actually playing it uh, could probably be a little bit better. Okay, and the final track of C tier, rank 56, is gonna be Ice Ice Outpost. The whole two different paths gimmick this track runs on works for the most most part, although the green path is just objectively faster most of the time, but the yellow path isn't exactly an unviable option if you need to avoid items or something. There's also a neat little thing you can do near the end of the race, where you can switch paths to take a little bit of a tighter line. There are also some shroomless shortcuts you can do near the middle and the end of the race, which adds a good bit of skill to this track, which has always been one of my favourite parts about it. Other than that, yeah, this track isn't exactly doing much, but I mean, in my eyes, it does enough to make it, you know, a respectable entry to the roster. Also, uh, shout out to the toads on the sidelines wearing winter coats. Look at those uh, cozy little guys. Okay, that'll finish off C tier, by far the most mid tracks in the entire game. We're now going to move on to B tier, and from now on, these are all going to be tracks that I definitely like, which is pretty mad considering we haven't even cracked the top 50 yet. But I mean, it just goes to show how good the track roster is in this game. I think that's enough waffle from me anyway. I think it is about time we move on to B tier. Okay, starting off with B tier, rank 55 is going to be Wild Woods. Can I just start off by saying, wow, this track is gorgeous. It amazes me that the track design on the Wii U's DLC, their worst ever selling console, bear in mind, visually is some of the best the series has ever seen. So you can really see why people were so disappointed in the graphics on some of the booster course pass tracks, considering the Switch is their best ever selling console, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the best ever selling game on said console. They didn't slack off on the Wii U, so there was certainly no excuse for them to do so on the Switch. But yeah, let's actually get into the specifics about what I like visually about this track. Wildwoods, as the name implies, takes place inside of a giant tree, and they went to such detail to really make it feel like that. Immediately at the start of the race, you can see Shy Guys and Toads standing on the tree branches next to you to pretty much let it be known that you are going to be going up, down, and all around this giant tree. And if you look even further straight ahead of you, you can see the leaves at the top of the tree and the rays of sunlight coming through them. All of this added detail 
detail and we haven't even hit the acceleration button. Now, in around the area coming up to the glider section has got to be my favorite part of the track as you get to drive past a whole Shy Guy civilization living inside the tree with Shy Guys swinging around on vines and standing outside their nice little treehouse homes to cheer you on. And to finish off the track is a water stream leading down to some floating lily pads with boost ramps to get some trick boosts off to end what might be one of the most stunning tracks in Mario Kart history in my opinion. Of course, I've not talked about every little detail in this track, but I don't really want to spend all day talking about the visuals in one track. So now I bet you're wondering, Liam, if this track is so amazing visually, why is it all the way down in the bottom of B tier? It's no other reason than, as a very sweaty bollocks competitive player, this track just isn't really my cup of tea to actually play. Simply put, this is a front-running track, and it drives very simplistic for the most part, which I'm not the biggest fan of when I'm picking a track to front-run. I'm much more of a fan with technical-based driving, like your odd Wario Stadium or TikTok Clock, where if I practice the tracks, learn the strats and everything, I can get rewarded a lot more for actually knowing how to drive them and keep my lead a bit easier. So Wild Woods 100% has to be at least top 5 in visuals for basically any Mario Kart track, but actually playing it is kind of meh. And there are a lot of other different running tracks I'd rather pick. But the looks of this track 100% should be the standard for modern day Mario Karts. Yes, I'm talking to you Sunset Wilds. And do not bring Toad Circuit into this. The Toad Balloons completely make up for any lack of quality that track has. And I won't be told otherwise. Rank 54 is Maple Treeway. So back to back we've had tracks with extremely similar settings. Being set in a giant tree. But what makes Maple Treeway just that little bit better in my eyes? Visually this track comes nowhere near Wildwoods. Unsurprised since it's an early-ish booster course pass track, but I enjoy playing this track more, which I value just a smidge more than visuals. I'm definitely still undervaluing this track compared to a lot of other people's rankings that I've seen. I seem to get the impression that the general opinion of this track is that it is one of the best in the series, which don't get me wrong, this track is good, but I don't think it's that good. Every entry of this track from the Wii all the way to the Switch has always been able to give me a pretty good time without fail though. The highlights of this track for me have got to be the bits at the end, the extremely tight bridge leading up to the boost ramp, and the straightaway at the very end giving you some choices to make. You can either stay in the middle, tricking off of the tree branches, which is the fastest possible route, or sacrifice a tiny bit of time to go on the treetop paths to the left and the right, in favour of getting an item box. Small decisions like that can really make or break your race on this track, which I quite like. The only bit of criticism I could give it is that I definitely would have preferred the wavy bridge from MK Wii over the glider, but that's only really a small complaint. I think over Overall, this track never really fails to give me a decent enough time, and the only reason this track isn't as high on the list as other people's rankings is mostly just due to my personal preference. Rank 53 is Super Bell Subway. I think it's pretty cool to see Nintendo play around with the concept of a track based around trains, a lot more than they did with Calamari Desert. The one thing I really like about this track though is that it accomplished what Yoshi Valley failed to do. There are four different routes which you can take in the main subway area, the first being the standard road on the bottom of the track which is faster and most of the time you will be driving here but there are three other paths which you can take which go a little bit wider and just over the train tracks the great thing about this is that there is an actual reason for you to take these paths in a race because they all have an item box for you to grab and at least four available coins and you don't lose all that much time by taking these different paths so a lot of the time especially if you're in the back it can be worth taking these routes to get your coin count up and potentially get an item box if all the other the ones are being taken. Some of the added details on this track are pretty cool too. There's a rail map on the very first turn, basically telling us that you can get to most of the base game tracks from Super Bell Subway, which I mean, that's pretty cool. Something else as well, just to the left of the finish line, there's a map telling us basically where Super Bell Subway is supposed to be set, which is apparently somewhere near around Toad Harbor and some place called Mushroom Beach, which I did do a little bit of research on, and to my knowledge, it's supposed to be World 3 of Challenge Road from Super Mario Party. That's what my Google search came up with anyway. I've not actually played Super Mario Party, so I can't say I'm too knowledgeable on the place. But I mean, yeah, these places are very close to each other canonly in the Mario universe 
universe, so the more you know, I guess. Anyways, what stops Superbar Subway from being a real top-tier track for me is mainly due to the large amount of shortcuts, especially in the subway area. Being able to avoid the trains well and take super tight lines here doesn't feel like it matters as much as it should, as this track comes more so down to taking the shortcuts than it does to being able to maneuver around the trains well. So I think less shortcuts on this track, maybe excluding the one at the end, would have been a pretty big improvement. Honest to god, it still perplexes me how much attention to detail went into some of the DLC courses on their worst ever selling console. Some extremely impressive stuff to come out of it. I just really can't stress it enough. Rank 52 is Daisy Cruiser. This is definitely going to be one of the more simplistic tracks I've talked about so far in B tier, but I think it serves its purpose as a good running track in my opinion, and it also does a few cool things with the concept of being on a cruise ship. The top of the cruise is definitely the most boring part of the track and the worst by far. The only things to note is that there are the two different optional routes you can take, but they're both practically identical except the one on the right is faster, so I've never really been too fussed about that. And there's also a swimming pool with some Goombas chilling out on some floaties, which I guess that can make for some funny track obstacles. Now, where this track really shines is when you actually get inside of the cruise ship, starting off with a much better track obstacle being the moving tables, which at first isn't really all that challenging to get around, but because the item boxes move with the tables, it has actually led me running into them face first sometimes because I've been so desperate to get an item box, which actually can make for a surprising challenge sometimes, and it also completely makes sense for it to happen on a cruise ship. And then we get to the part in which underwater driving made significantly better. Coming up to the last item set, you can take a slower underwater bottom path, but with the benefit of many more items being available to you. This track certainly isn't graphically amazing or anything, and driving this track can be sort of simple, but it has decent track hazards and plays around with the concept of being on a cruise ship pretty nicely. So it's pretty okay and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. Rank 51 is Amsterdam Drift. The tour tracks from wave 1 to 3, except for Sydney, which we haven't talked about yet, were pretty bland and nothing special for the most part. It was wave 4 and onward where the tour tracks started to get really good, except for LA Laps, which we have spoke about, and that track kind of stinks. But that aside, the tour tracks in the later waves were very, very good, and a big step up from the ones that we got before. But yeah, Amsterdam is a pretty cool track. Getting to drive past the windmills and the flower fields is pretty nice, but I definitely think these sections could have really used some of the pre-booster course graphics. But I mean, hey, what are you gonna do? I still enjoy driving around these areas. The underwater section definitely left a pretty bad first impression on me, but after actually learning how to properly drive it, I can say with confidence that the underwater section is pretty serviceable. The best thing this track has about it is that none of the sections of this track overstay their welcome, so it doesn't feel like you're driving on the same type of road for eternity, kinda like Paris or Tokyo does for example. Every single lap on this track always has something new to offer and always feels fresh, which is the main improvement that a lot of the more recent tour tracks has. So yeah, I think Amsterdam is pretty solid. Rank 50 is DK Mountain. DK Mountain is a track I originally wasn't a fan of, mainly because I'm not the biggest fan of how bumpy the mountain section is, especially on a game like 8 Deluxe, where the controls are probably the smoothest in the entire series. But after actually getting to know how to play the track, I'm still not the biggest fan of the mountain section, but it's grown on me a tiny bit. The main thing that I like about it is being able to do a pretty cool shortcut thanks to there not being any invisible barriers to the right side of the mountain anymore. It's actually pretty consistent, and I always enjoy pulling us off online. I am also of the opinion that being able to trick off of the bridge at the end is a pretty big improvement. Simply put, because it gives us something to do rather than just having a long straightaway with nothing but driving straight and throwing items forward. I think the one thing that stops DK Mountain from being a higher tier for me is that they kind of just unnecessarily ruined the shortcut near the end of the track. They added a lot more fencing compared to its Mario Kart Wii counterpart, for example, which I would assume was done so as an attempt to completely take out or rather just nerf the shortcuts, which they did an awful job of. The shortcut is still 100% necessary to take if you want to win, but it's just a whole lot more annoying and tedious to do now, especially when playing online when having to watch out for getting bumped and whatnot. So pretty much DK Mountain is still a solid track that I do like, but it doesn't come close to its GameCube or Wii counterparts, which I would probably put somewhere around A tier for both of them. Rank 49 is Waluigi Pinball. So this is the track that was just cut short of the top half of the list, and I know for a fact a lot of 
of you guys are not going to be happy with me about this. Especially uh, you, Rookie. Especially since this track is a fan favorite, but I ask that you hear me out on this. This track on paper is definitely very good. The concept of driving around a pinball machine is really cool. Unfortunately, it's just a case of this track isn't really my cup of tea. First off, I have to say that the actual main pinball machine area is by far my favorite. I like how you have the option of staying in the middle for a faster line, but being at risk of getting pummeled by the pinball. Or you can play it safe and go to the wide path and go for the coins instead with no risk of getting pinballed. Overall, driving in the main pinball machine area is super, super cool and I really like it. Then the rest of the track, yeah, it's not all that appealing to me. I see it, it's just kind of road with the odd pinball that chases you around and for the most part, I'm just trying to get this section out of the way as quickly as possible to get to the actual good part about the pinball machine. Also, the first few turns after the first item set are some of the laggiest in the entire game, which isn't exactly a determining factor of why this track isn't brilliant in my eyes, but it doesn't exactly help its case and makes it not as enjoyable as it could be for me, especially if I'm playing it in a competitive setting. But yeah, pinball's still pretty good, that's why I do have it in B tier, but hopefully that should explain why in terms of being one of the best tracks in the series, apparently. It's just not exactly my cup of tea, but I can completely understand why this track is so loved, and for that reason I am definitely happy that this track did come back in the booster course pass. Rank 48 is Cheap Cheap Beach. Okay, before I talk about the track, I want to mention that we're officially halfway done with the list. And if you have watched this video all the way through so far, then you're an absolute legend. Okay, back to the track. I pretty simply think Cheap Cheap Beach looks nice and plays pretty nicely as well. Being able to drive underwater in this game makes this track significantly better than its DS counterpart as well, in my opinion. The crabs surprisingly make for a decent track hazard as like three of them are placed in your natural line. And a lot of the time stuff like this makes zero difference to a track. But on occasion, I have had a crab get the job done on me in a race, so I'll give them credit for that. And the ending section of this track is such a love-hate situation with me. The main thing about it is that it's right after the last item set, and it's the tightest section of the track, by far, making for some extremely chaotic moments. On the one hand, with how spammy this section can be, it can feel a little bit uncompetitive. But on the other hand, it can also be a little bit funny at times, so, you know, to me, it has its pros and cons. Yeah, Cheap Cheap Beach is a pretty good beach track. Not much more to be said, really. Rank 47 is the Womp Ruins. This track is kind of similar to Waluigi Pinball for me, in the sense that I have parts of this track that I really like, and then other parts that I don't like so much. For example, my favorite part of this track is the section right in the middle, where it gives you the option to either drive on the normal road, drive underwater, drive on the anti-gravity, or on lap three, it gives you an additional glider route that you can take. I think this section of the track is just peak track design. I'm also a big fan of the turn just before this, giving you the option of a slightly slower anti-gravity path, but with the trade-off that it has a bunch of coins and a double box for you to take. There are also these rolling temple stones, I don't really know what to call them, which make for a decent obstacle to try and get past, and end up actually opening up the glider section which I was talking about on lap 3, which is a pretty creative way to get some more use out of them. The ending of this track can be pretty bland to me though. The ending shortcut is kind of nice, but that's about it. The thwomps, especially when compared to the ones on SNES Rainbow Road, are extremely laughable as a track obstacle cool, which is uh, pretty bad for a track called Thwomp Ruins. The last bit of praise I can give it is that the dandelions are kind of cute, I guess, and the ramp shortcut at the start is kind of whatever, but this track definitely nails the whole temple vibe, and for that I think it's a decent track to end off the Mushroom Cup with, but in terms of being the finale of the Mushroom Cup, I definitely don't think it comes anywhere near something like Shy Guy Bazaar or Toad's Factory. Rank 46 is Moo Moo Meadows. Moo Moo Meadows is a very simple track with not a whole lot going on, and I mean, I'll be honest, I don't have that much of an excuse for it being in the top half. But I mean, it's the funny cow track and I thoroughly enjoy it. Although something that is pretty nice that I've not seen that many people talk about is the fact that they added a glider section towards the end of the track. And it actually allows you to get some coins hanging off of the edge of the windmill, which is pretty cool. It is only really useful if you're bagging, but I mean, hey, I find it kind of fun to do so. Thought it was worth a mention. Pretty much, I just think they nailed the farm aesthetic with this track. With plenty of windmills, barns, and the cows, this track just wouldn't be near as good without the cows. So in summary, funny cow track. Not much more needs to be said. Rank 45 is Neo Bowser City. My favorite thing about this track has got to be its setting. I really dig the rainy, gloomy, but futuristic city vibe with all the common Mario enemies and the big Bowser billboards to really nail in the fact that this ain't no Mario circuits. You're in Bowser's turf now. The slippery physics on this track actually make for a pretty fun challenge, especially on the extremely narrow S turn, which to me is by far the most memorable part of the track. 
track. The only glaring issue that I have with NBC is that the entire track is really narrow, and I can't really say I'm the biggest fan of that, mainly because it makes this track really spammy and just makes items completely unavoidable a lot of the time. Like, if the guy in front of you pulls a bomb, consider yourself a dead man. But yeah, like a few of the other Wii U DLC tracks I've discussed, I think this one is nothing short of fantastic visually. It just nails the whole neon, futuristic, but kind of evil look. But in terms of playing this track online, there are certainly other tracks I'd rather be picking. But the whole general looks and vibe of this track definitely can't go unnoticed, and I 100% have to give it credit for that. Rank 44 is Moonview Highway. My opinions on this track have always been so varied over the years. I used to dislike this track so much on the Wii because I found the cars way too challenging and inconsistent to avoid which stopped me from enjoying this track all that much. And looking back, that was a total skill issue because I socked a Mario Kart Wii back in the day. And ironically, one of the things that makes the 8 Deluxe version worse, in my opinion, is how much slower and in general less of a threat the cars are. Especially the bomb cars, these things used to be the scariest things on the planet on MK Wii. In this game, they just kind of give you a slap on the wrist and you carry on driving like nothing happened, which is pretty lame in my opinion. Yeah, I really should have appreciated the challenge this track used to give me back in the day. But to be fair, Moonview did crack the top half of what I consider to be the best roster of tracks in the entire series. So I do have a few positives to talk about too. I actually really like how they made different versions of the soundtrack for when you're driving in the main highway area and for when you're going through the main city. It's a nice touch that they didn't really need to add, but they did, which is pretty cool. And also for a track called Moonview Highway, in the highway section of the track, they absolutely nailed the moonlit look that it has. It's absolutely stunning and it's definitely extremely nice and scenic to drive through the lit up city at nighttime too. They also left in the massive Mushroom Moon musical billboard, which has always been the one part of this track I've specifically remembered as a kid, so I mean, that's pretty nice. So yeah, the main takeaway from Moonview Highway is that it's still pretty good. I probably wouldn't take it over the original version of the track though, as that version of the track could always give me a much more exhilarating time, even if I failed to appreciate it in the past. Rank 43 is Boo Lake. This is a track that isn't really doing anything special, but with some of the nice touches that were added and the track layout being pretty fun in my eyes, Boo Lake can pretty much always provide me with a pretty good time when I'm playing it. First off, to my knowledge, this was the first Booster Course Pass retro track to start implementing anti-gravity, and it starts off by taking you around a very sharp anti-gravity turn, which is a fun challenge, and if practiced and properly taken, it can really give you an advantage over the other players you're playing against. The same actually goes for the two next cool things about this track. The shroom cut on this track got turned into a little patch of off-road with some cardboard cutouts as obstacles, which if done properly, you can actually go into it shroomless, which is a little bit faster than going around. I think the most satisfying part about this track for me has got to be getting the low tricks at the end. As I just said, it's super satisfying to pull off, and it's also a lot faster, so if you can learn how to do it then, you'll put yourself at a pretty big advantage. Other than those nice little bits I just mentioned, this track is kind of bland and it's very short as well, but I don't really mind that too much. This track is still pretty solid and it was nice to see Nintendo start to implement anti-gravity into the booster course past retro courses. Rank 42 and the final track of B tier is Vancouver Velocity. This might be the tour track that I have forgotten about the most, probably because I never really play this one in competitive play, which surprises me a little bit because this track is actually pretty decent. For me, this track is very similar to New York Minute with the whole rainy city at nighttime theme, but I think Vancouver has a lot more to do and see on it. On lap one, we immediately start off with an entire section dedicated to the suspension bridge. It's pretty cool, although I'm not the biggest fan of how tight and compressed this section is, and especially how chaotic it can lead the very start of the race to be. And then after the glider section, a bit of this track is just your generic slippery road, but is quickly followed by driving under the massive Olympic cauldron as the thumbnail for this track shows. And then later on on lap two, we get to my favorite part of the track being the ice hockey stadium. Now, let me tell you, I'm a big fan of driving through big sports stadiums, as will be shown when I talk about Madrid Drive later. But ice hockey, to my knowledge, is a pretty big thing over in Canada, kind of like football is for me. And to see them make it a major part of the track on laps two and three is pretty cool. Also, the shy guys skating around have surprisingly caused me some problems, and I love me a good track obstacle. So I'd say with Vancouver, my favorite part is definitely the ice hockey stadium, and the other sections of this track maybe could be better, but I mean, I'd certainly take that over just driving on plain old road, which makes this track pretty good in my eyes.
Okay, that'll finish off B tier. We've now got A tier to get through, which, trust me, is going to be by far the longest one yet. For context, the second highest amount of tracks I have in a tier is D tier, with 16 tracks. And A tier has a whopping 21. And there are also tracks I significantly enjoy talking about more than the ones in D tier. So I'll have a good bit to say, and we might be here a while. So, uh, yeah, buckle up, get some snacks, go number two if you need to. And, I mean, let's just crack on with it. Okay, the first track to make A tier, rank 41, is Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is such a charming little track. It isn't doing anything special in terms of technical driving or anti-gravity, but I think for an Animal Crossing track, it really didn't need to. I'm a big fan of the references they added and how important they are to the track itself as well. You can find fruits that fall off the trees, which can be used as mushrooms. The balloons that you usually find holding presents in the games are now holding item boxes for you to grab on a glider section, which is pretty creative. And the cherry on top, they they made Rossetti a goddamn track obstacle. Because, I mean, why not, I guess? This is the most relevant he's been in recent years, so I find that quite funny as well. I think the best thing about this track by far has to be the four different seasons you can play it in, being summer, which is the default, and then spring, winter, and autumn. And since we're in a ranking video, I think it'd be a little bit silly to not rank these. Okay, the worst one, in my opinion, is spring. This season adds extra trick ramps to the beginning and the ending sections, but the way they've been placed, I find them more so getting in the way as opposed to actually being useful to me. Although in fairness, at the very least, I think the cherry blossom trees look nice. Number three is winter. This is just Animal Crossing, but you have to drive on a slippery icy road the whole time, which just makes it kind of objectively worse for me. Although not as much of a detriment as the ramp placements on spring, in my opinion. Although there is a snowman that gets in your way, but the snowman's an absolute chad, so I don't mind that so much. Number two is summer. This is the standard season that takes place in time trials. It's basically just spring and winter without any of the poorly placed ramps or the slippery road. So it's pretty good. And my personal favorite is autumn. I think the only difference between this and summer is that there aren't any ramps on the beach section, but I could not care less about that. My main reason for preferring this over summer is just that I think autumn looks nicer. And it's just a little bit more scenic for me to drive around over the other seasons. And in terms of visuals, Animal Crossing just kind of nails it. In the background, you've got the town hall, Nook's Cranny, basically every important location in the games you can think of. And the whole season and look of the track being different every time you play it is really, really cool as well. The only gripes that I have with this track is that driving it is kind of simplistic and pretty boring for the most part, and it has a little too many shortcuts in my opinion. I can't really say I'm that fussed though, I never really thought an Animal Crossing track would have, you know, big blue or dragon driftway levels of track design. It's a simple and charming track that to me does Animal Crossing a pretty good service. Rank 40 is Daisy Circuit. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I can't think of that much to say about this track. The only notable difference they made in this game worth talking about is making the ramp in the shroom cuts a glider ramp which is slightly better in my opinion yeah but i mean other than that there's a few more boost panels there's like an added ramp this track is pretty much the exact same as it was on the wii which i thought was pretty good therefore i think the it deluxe version is pretty good also i think the track design is pretty fun considering it's a circuit track which tend to be pretty boring and the shortcuts adds a very much needed way of being able to come back in a race yeah i mean this isn't really a track i can go into extensive detail about I just think it's pretty good and that's about it. Rank 39 is Riverside Park. I would say Riverside Park and Wave 4 in general was the beginning of Nintendo actually making some of the BCP tracks up to par and quality with the base game. Well, I mean most of them at least. This track as a Super Circuit remake is what Sunset Wilds should have been. Visually, this is one of the nicest looking tracks to come out of the BCP and it evolved itself in new ways a little bit, kind of like Ribbon Road did. Most notably with the spiral turn at the end being turned into a dimly lit cave with some goofy little walking piranha plants that serve as a funny little track obstacle. Ending off with a massive jump at the end going through a waterfall. Absolute cinema. So visually this track is amazing and they definitely changed up the track enough to make it feel a lot more fresh as opposed to Sunset Wilds where they kind of just added some rocks and called it a day. The main reason why this track isn't a real top tier and keeps it at the bottom of A tier. It especially ruins the fact that I find this track very fun to drive but trying to front run it especially in a low skill gap lobby is nothing short of a death sentence. And generally, 
I'm more of a fan of tracks that are better to front run. But I mean, still, Riverside is a gorgeous track. And I'd say it was a turning point for when Nintendo really started to up their game on the BCP graphics. So for that, and especially the funny piranha plants, I have got to give it credit. Rank 38 is Singapore Speedway. The main take I've gotten from most of the rankings that I have watched is that this is the best tour track, undoubtedly. Which I personally don't really agree with that. But I definitely can see why people think this is the best one. And I have plenty of good things to say about it. Singapore is probably the most vibrant one out of all the tour tracks. And definitely the best looking with the most to see and do. Like getting to drive on top of the infinity pool. Getting to go through a whole market section with its own different soundtrack. And that's just to name a few. All of the glider sections on this track are deserving of high praise. Especially the lap 3 glider that gives you so much to do. You can either stay on the glider and hit the boost rings. Go down and get an item box. Or you can go to the path on the left which is like 10 times slower. I guess it's supposed to be like the scenic route or something. So yeah, this track is extremely nice and vibrant looking and just gives you so much to do and see. But if that's the case, why don't I think this is the best tour track like so many other people do? It is nothing but personal preference. There aren't that many memorable set pieces to me compared to something like the football stadium on Madrid or the Coliseum on Rome. And a few things I'm not the biggest fan of from a competitive perspective. I think this track is severely lacking in coins, which I'm not the biggest fan of. And the last set of items is way too far from the finish line, in my opinion. Like, if you miss this item set, you're in a really sticky situation because you have to go a pretty sizable amount of the race without an item. I definitely don't enjoy playing this track as much as other people for the reasons I've just stated. But also with the good stuff about it, I can definitely see why people do think this is the best tour track. While I personally don't really agree, Singapore is definitely still up there and definitely a city track that I enjoy for the most part. Rank 37 is Peach Gardens. Okay, I'll go Go ahead and state the obvious, the best thing about this track by far is being able to go backwards on lap 3. It was definitely a good way of mixing this track up in a way we weren't expecting, and to me probably makes this the best iteration we've had of Peach Gardens. Other than that, they made some subtle little changes here and there. They changed the boring old square hedges from before to actually be in the shape of some of the characters, which makes it so I get to do my favourite activity of high-fiving Bush Luigi on lap 3. And they also changed the second hedge area into a giant piranha plant, which me personally, I prefer it a little bit more, and I think it makes for a pretty good track obstacle. For the most part, though, this is just the same old Peach Gardens. The Chain Chomps are still chomping around, the Monty Moles stick around too. The only thing I'm not the hugest fan of is that I kind of miss the ramps and the off-road near the Monty Moles, but that's only really a slight nitpick. In conclusion, I think this is a little bit more of a refined version of the track, and I have a much better time playing it than any of the other versions. Rank 36 is Cloudtop Cruise. This is a very good front-running track. Certainly not my first choice, but if this were to get picked when I was in first, I would have zero complaints. The highlights of this track to me have got to be driving on the airship, giving you two small routes to choose between, the stormy anti-gravity section with the lightning serving as a good track obstacle, often getting in your way especially if you get greedy and poorly timed trying to get on one of the boost panels, and to end it off is a pretty cool little leaf shortcut which is always a fun way to end it off. This is also just stating the obvious but the soundtrack for Cloudtop Cruise is nothing short of phenomenal, and I am certainly far from the first person to say that. This track in all honesty is is doing pretty much almost everything right. I don't see many flaws in it. I think the reason I'm maybe not as mesmerized as other people when I'm playing this track is that once you learn how to play this track, the driving gets a lot more simplistic. Getting the super bounces are no problem at all. You almost always take the right path on the airship, and avoiding the lightning on the boost panels is extremely easy once you practice this track enough and learn the patterns for them. And I feel like they made the leaf shortcut at the end a little bit too easy, and it would have been nice to be presented with a little bit more of a challenge from it. Yeah, I mean, Cloudtop Cruise is still good though. I'm not exactly as big over it as some other people are, but I mean, that's okay. I can definitely see this track was pretty nicely put together, and I'd say I can pretty much always have a good time on it. Rank 35 is Coconut Mall. Coconut Mall on this game is pretty good. I feel like it's kind of hard to go wrong with a track that's this good, but in a way they kind of did. The 8 Deluxe version, in my opinion, is definitely the worst one. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the good bits, which is mostly going to be carried over from previous iterations. Unsurprisingly, the track design is still amazing, really making you feel like you're driving around a big shopping mall, giving you so many different ways to go around it. The glider section at the end is really cool too, and especially pairs well with this game's motion glider. If you can motion glider well at the dying moments of a race here, that's usually your number one way of clutching up on this track and is always super satisfying. Now, what stops this track from being as top tier as it should be, for me, comes down to two things. First off, I think this track is way too understood scaled, especially when comparing it to its 7 and Wii counterparts. In a sense, it makes it feel a lot more 
underwhelming for me whenever I play this version. And most importantly, they absolutely butchered the section of the track with the moving cars. Now, when this track first released for the BCP in Wave 1, the cars just did not move in the slightest. They were just kind of parked there, which was immediately met with backlash and was later fixed in the Wave 2 patch, making it so every now and then the cars do a few donuts as a means to try and hit out the player, which is an okay-ish track obstacle. That's not really what I'm fussed about, though. What's really missing to me are the boost panels and the risk-reward factor that they added to the section of the track. You could try and go for a boost panel to shave off some time off your opponents, but also be at risk of just game-ending yourself by running into one of the cars. In this game, it doesn't have the boost panel, so it's kind of just the cars, and it's pretty easy to stay out of the way of them, making this section of the track just kind of a boring straightaway. But at the end of the day, it is still Coconut Mall, so they would have had to try pretty hard to make this track bad in the slightest, but they worsened it enough to make the 8 Deluxe version just objectively the worst version in my opinion. Rank 34 is Dragon Driftway. I really think Dragon Driftway is such an underappreciated track with a really cool and creative concept. Making a Chinese temple themed track based on driving around Gobbleguts from Galaxy 2 is pretty cool, and it's definitely a good use of anti-gravity considering Gobbleguts is just a very long worm dragon. I had to google that by the way. It's super nice to see them make such a good and unique track out of what might have been one of the more forgotten boss fights in the past 3D Mario games. As for the driving, it's actually very fun. This track is extremely twisty, which is pretty unsurprising considering you're driving on a massive worm, and it makes this track a fun challenge when you're starting out on it, especially thanks to it probably having one of my most favourite shroomless shortcuts in the game too. It also has just enough regular shortcuts to not make front running completely unviable, but enough to give you a good enough chance to catch up if things went sour for you. Now, of course, this track isn't perfect. It wouldn't be barely out of the top 30 if that was the case. The glaring issue I have with this track a little bit like Neo Bowser City that we discussed earlier is that this track just feels way too narrow. Because of this, playing Dragon online can feel like an absolute spam fest, and avoiding items on this track is a task and a half. I mean, as I said with NBC earlier, if some guy pulls a bomb in front of you, you might as well just close the game at that point. This track is still really good though. Maybe it could play a little bit better online, which makes it far from perfect for me, with some challenging driving on it too. So it's always a fun one to play for me. Okay, now it's time for the track that I've seen so many people say is the best track in the series and was the perfect way to finish off the booster course pass, which I just really cannot find myself agreeing with. Rank 33 is Wii Rainbow Road and ranking it this slow might be a hot take to a lot of people, but I mean, you're just gonna have to hear me out on this one. First of all, I will say that this track is still very good. There is absolutely no denying that. What's really good about this one is that it's such a long track, but it's always still giving you something new to do, whether it be getting tricks off the wavy road, going off the half pipes, going through the cannon glider, and I mean, that's just to name a few. This track is also without question the best looking Rainbow Road we've had yet, and as a really nice touch, they also kept it so you just bloody ignite for a brief moment after you fall off the track. Now, the main reason I don't think this track is one of the best in the series mainly comes down to the fact that in this game, this track is kind of piss easy. Way too easy, especially when we're comparing it to its version on the Wii. And for me personally, that takes out a lot of the enjoyment I had for it. As on the Wii, it kind of felt like it was your final test after you just slogged your way through the first three tracks on the Special Cup. Which on the Wii, I'd say all of the Special Cup tracks were pretty decently challenging. And then the Special Cup in that game ended off with the most challenging track in the game by far, which the exhilaration I felt playing Wii Rainbow Road on that game is just absolutely unmatched. And then on 8 Deluxe, I mean, it's still pretty fun, don't get me wrong. But as I said, this track is just nowhere near as challenging. And this track isn't anywhere near as narrow and staying on this track is nothing short of a cakewalk. Now, you could argue that I can't really say this as I am a competitive player. Firstly, this is my list. I can say whatever I want. Secondly, I completely disagree with that. I can name a number of tracks that give me a harder time. And the rage-inducing difficulty was like half of the fun for me back in the day. No! <laughs> So this track is still pretty good, but to me personally, nowhere near as goated as it could have been, or well, should have been. Rank 32 is Sunshine Airport. This is definitely a good airport track. I'm not doing anything game-changing by any means, but I genuinely cannot think of anything it's doing wrong. It starts off by making you have the time getting past a conveyor belt with a bunch of luggage on it, which it isn't very challenging, but I mean, it's a decently creative track obstacle given the theme. After that comes a very cool section of the track, giving you the option of either going through the plane or going under it. I I really wish going through the plane itself was actually faster though, because the concept for it is really cool, but you just kind of 
never really see people doing it because it's just that much slower. And to end the track off is a very big glider section, which if timed correctly, you can actually get a trick off of one of the plane wings. It saves virtually no time, but I mean, it's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, I don't really have any negative things to say about this one. It's not groundbreaking by any means, but I mean, it's a pretty good airport themed track that I always have a good time on. Rank 31 is Bangkok Rush. I used to absolutely adore this track when it first came out. Since then, better tour tracks have come out, so I'm not that head over heels for it anymore, but I still really like it. This track is always giving you something new to do on each section, which is extremely essential for basically any tour track to keep things fresh. Lap 1 immediately starts off with a really nice water stream section, giving you a bunch of boats to trick off, quickly followed by a market section, giving you a top path option to grab some extra coins. Then we get to what is my favourite part of this track, being the sky train section. You can either stay on the bottom path or go up top, which gives you four different ways of getting back down. Going one way on the left is the fastest, but it only gives you one coin. The two other routes in the middle are a little bit slower, but you get at least three coins from both of them. And the stairs tucked away on the right is by far the slowest, but it's the only one that you get an item box from. And then on lap two is a pretty nice glider section, having a statue you can get a trick from and grab some coins. There is also a shroom shortcut in which I didn't realize was there at first, because the way the fencing was placed really makes it look like it's out of bounds. But I mean, it was pretty satisfying when I first discovered it. And the last notable thing to talk about would be the car park they made into a big spiraling turn on lap three for some reason, followed by some bouncy market tents, which are kind of silly, but they're pretty fun, I guess. And I mean, it gives you the option of entirely skipping them to get an item box, which is pretty cool. I'd say some bits of this track have started to bore me in recent times, though, especially most of lap two. Disregarding the glider section, it's not the most entertaining for me. A lot of it is just kind of driving on road and the boost panels and the crabs towards the end of it are just kind of whatever. Bangkok is always a good time, though. It knows how to keep itself fresh on each different section, which, as I said, on a multiple section track, that's probably the most important thing to stop it from, you know, boring me to death. Rank 30 is Sydney Sprint. This was the definition of a diamond in the rough in the earlier waves. If I compare this one to basically every other tour track from waves 1 to 3, it's just kind of in a league of its own. This track might have a lot more generic road and maybe not as much to offer as compared to some of the other tour tracks. It still has its fair share of nice things though, and I find this track to be very fun to drive, which redeems it a good bit for me. The only memorable set pieces to me are being able to glide in and out of the opera house and the section on lap two with a bunch of grass shortcuts to take which i usually wouldn't be the biggest fan of this entirely since as was the case for a lot of earlier tour tracks this one for the most part just kind of consists of road but to me a few things make up for this being able to do some kind of cool ramp strats on lap two and three is pretty nice and at the end of lap two there's a pretty cool shortcut on the last trick ramp which you can do by doing a perfectly timed mini turbo trick you can get just enough distance to get over the fence which is a decent little time save and actually quite challenging to do. The main reason I like Sydney a little bit more over Bangkok and Singapore, which arguably have better track design and a lot more to do to other people, is that I find Sydney to be a much more challenging front-running track having the ramp strats as I mentioned and a decently challenging shortcut. So for me personally, I just enjoy playing this one more. I don't really have much more to add to be fair. I think Sydney is a very good front running track and that's why I like it. Rank 29 is Bowser's Castle. Okay, first off, can I say they did not need to go this hard on the castle? This might be the most intimidating I've ever seen a Bowser's Castle look. And I mean, that's just in general. I'm not even just talking about Mario Kart. But I mean, yeah, carrying on with that point, this track is just unbelievably stunning. And the attention to detail is nothing short of amazing. It makes me extra grateful that they did rescue this game from the Wii U, because the effort that they put in some of these tracks just could have gone completely unnoticed. Also, the driving on this one is pretty fun. It provides you with plenty of opportunities to get dicked over, having pointing lasers, a really big mace, and some spinning fireballs too. Now, the section I've avoided talking about are the anti-gravity split paths, which, yeah, they did the whole mechanical giant Bowser thing again, and I don't really like it. I mean, it was kind of cool the first time, but I think I'd like to see something a bit more creative as a track obstacle, as opposed to just kind of sticking another giant mechanical Bowser in. I actually had an idea of my own. If you look at the castle, you can see these massive turrets that are kind of just there for show, but I reckon they could have done something with them and had them shoot exploding cannonballs, pretty similar to the ones you see on Shy Guy Beach on the Wii. I genuinely think that would make for a much better track obstacle than just the bloody big old mechanical Bowser again. But yeah, this track looks amazing though. They went so unbelievably hard on some of the visuals. 
Bowser's. The only issue I really have is I'm a little bit bored of the giant mechanical Bowser's, but that is only a slight nitpick from me. Rank 28 is Shy Guy Falls. This track is just so fun, and the concept for it is really cool too. Being a giant cliffside mine filled to the broom with Shy Guy workers, who actually chime into the soundtrack when you drive past them. Also, the use of anti-gravity on this track is excellent. Having an entire section of the track going up and then all the way back down a waterfall. It's kind of funny to me how you have to constantly hop going up the waterfall to avoid the water stream from pushing you down. And of course, going off the glider section at the very end of the waterfall is pretty cool. After the glider section is the option of going on either the top or the bottom path, quickly followed by a grass cut, which has ways of being done with and without a shroom, which I much prefer over if you had to use shrooms to take this one. Plus, the easy method of doing this one, shroomless, actually gives the bottom path a purpose. So, I mean, that's pretty nice. But doing little cool things like being able to go up and down a waterfall with the anti-gravity mechanic is something I'll always appreciate. And it really makes me wonder what they might do with some of the tracks in future Mario Kart games, if they do keep anti-gravity, which I would assume they would, and just how much they could revolutionize some of the past courses they haven't brought back yet. Tracks like Wario's Coliseum and Wario's Shipyard come to mind, but I mean, yeah, Shy Guy Falls is pretty cool. Not much more to add. Rank 27 is Hyrule Circuit. I've actually never played a Zelda game in my life, but I will say that Hyrule Circuit gave me a very good first impression on it. The track design overall is pretty good, replacing the Piranha Plants with the Deku Barbers, I believe they're called, and then replacing the coins with Rupees, I'm sure pleased most Zelda fans, and even I think it's pretty cool. Kinda like how I enjoyed them replacing coins on Animal Crossing with Bells. The driving on this track is pretty fun, you're never really short on coins, or well, I should say Rupees, and there are plenty of grass cuts on this track, including the one at the very end which can be done shroomless pretty effortlessly, which as I said for the cut on Shy Guy Falls, being able to do it with and without a shroom makes it significantly better than it otherwise would have been for me. What makes this shortcut even cooler is that it actually skips an item set, so if you're taking this shortcut you're skipping out on an item, so there are benefits to both taking and skipping this shortcut which I value a decent bit. Also I know puzzle solving is kind of a big thing in Zelda games, and for them to implement it in the castle section, in which you hit all three of the spin boosters to open up a boost ramp is pretty cool and creative. Although unfortunately it is like 10 times slower and I can't remember the last time I've done it. But I mean regardless it's still pretty cool. And then I don't really have much more to say. Maybe they could have done a bit more with the castle section as it is just kind of one downward spiral and of course the whole opening up the boost ramp thing. And then you're just kind of right back outside which can feel slightly underwhelming. But I mean that aside from what I can see the Zelda fans were eating pretty good with this one. Rank 26 is DK Jungle. I'm not gonna lie guys, the funny monkey track goes hard. The actual jungle sections are really nice looking, being shaded off by all of the leaves, with the occasional sunbeam coming through. Even got some parrots just chilling out, and of course the necessary DK barrels. Shortly after we get to drive by DK's crib with some tiki's getting in our way, and after driving through some more jungle areas we get to the holy banana shrine which is pretty cool. And then to end off the track is a glider section going over an underwater section, leading to a split path option at the very last turn with a tighter path being faster but having to risk getting over a small gap and the wider path being slower but having more coins and potentially making it easier for you to stay out of other players' ways. This section of the track is actually what stops it from being top tier for me though, because it is so goddamn narrow and it's also right at the end of the track, which is just not a good thing. I'm telling you, I have PTSD from the amount of times my race has just been ended by virtually any item being thrown up on this section of the track. It's just so unbelievably narrow and the only way you're guaranteed to come out of it is having a dodge, which is kind of lame in my opinion. I mean, that is really the only negative thing I have to say about this track, though. I just don't like that specific section of the track. Everything else is basically amazing. The jungle sections look super nice. The giant banana shrine is obviously the best part. Overall, it's not just the funny monkey track, but a well thought out and executed monkey track as well. Rank 25 is Athens Dash. Me personally, I have not seen this track get near as much play as it did opposed to when Wave 5 just released, which I think is kind of a shame because I actually think this track is pretty good. Like, like any good tour track, every single lap of Athens always has something new to offer. Lap 1 has trick opportunities off the pillars, a really nice glider section. Lap 2 immediately starts off with some giant leaps off ramps and ends off with you driving through Parthenon. And lap 3 has my favourite glider section, going downwards giving you trick opportunities off of the roofs. And shortly after the last item set, you're met with a very brief optional cave path, which has the benefit of giving you an item box. And then boulders start falling down on the track, which I mean credit to them, they have caused me some problems 
problems in the past. So I'd say they make for a pretty good track obstacle. Honestly, I'd say the only bad things about this one are going through Parthenon on the end of both lap two and three, respectively. I'm not really a fan of how repetitive that is. And also in Parthenon, they added probably the most useless shroom cut of all time. Like they might as well have just made it regular road at that point. Also graphically, this track could look a lot better. I mean, some of the homes on this track look god awful, but I guess that'll come with the in general plastic art style of tour. None of that really takes away from my enjoyment of the track though. It's fun to drive and it plays pretty nicely online too. So I mean, I'd say Athens Dash is a very good track that I enjoy and I don't have much more to say about it. Rank 24 is Roma Vanti. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, bar LA laps, I'm actually quite fond of the tour tracks released in the later waves. And yeah, that includes Roma Vanti, which I think is an excellent track. In my opinion, I actually think this is the best looking tour track. Obviously, it's not perfect since it is still a tour track, but I mean, for tour track standards, it's pretty excellent. Driving on this one is really fun. There's a lot of plain road on this one, especially on lap two, which maybe isn't the best, but I don't know. I think the road on this one looks significantly nicer than any of the others. So, you know, I'll give it a pass. Now, my favorite part of this track is how well they involve the Coliseum. Starting off on lap one, having an upward spiral on the sides while having to be careful not to fall off the track on the left side. And then on lap three, you go on a bridge through it, which is being chomped away at by the chain chomps, practically trying to scran you up, which I find quite funny. Other than that, the Rocky Wrenches make an appearance, which is pretty cool. And they're actually a lot more helpful than Monty Mole, giving you a trick opportunity right off their forehead. The big U-turn shortcuts on lap one and three give this track decently good catch-up potential. And getting to glide over the Trevi Fountain is cool and certainly very scenic. Yeah, if you had to give me one track just to have a nice, relaxing, scenic drive through, it would probably be this one. But I mean, even disregarding that, I can have a fun time playing this one, even in a competitive setting, which I value a good bit. Rank 23 is Mount Wario. This track is definitely a standout favorite for a lot of people. Can't exactly say that's the same case for me, but I mean, don't get it twisted. Nearing the top of A tier on my list is absolutely nothing to snooze at in the slightest. I mean, Mount Wario is just an absolute adventure from start to finish. I mean, of course it is, since this track is based on a deep descent down a mountain. That being said, we immediately start off at the icy peak with plenty of wider options to get your coin count up and a pretty cool turn skip shortcut you can do right at the end of the lap. Lap two has got to be my favorite though, starting off with a cave section with both the regular bottom path, driving along the water stream, and the optional glider that lets you get some extra trick opportunities off the rocks, quickly followed by the Wario Dam, which yeah, has some anti-gravity waterfalls with boost panels coming off them. And to end off lap two is the tree section, which is generally hated from what I've seen. But I mean, I don't know, man, I kind of like it. Being able to nail that tree section perfectly is one of the most satisfying things ever. And I mean, in general, I just really like the challenge that it does offer. Lap three is probably my least favorite part about the track. I do like snaking down these ski slopes and getting a bunch of trick opportunities off these snow bumps is pretty cool. That ending glider section all the way down to the finish line just kind of feels like a glorified straightaway to me though, and is usually a bit too much of a spam fest for my liking. That section of the track is probably why this track isn't as highly ranked as other people's rankings that I've seen. I think this track is nothing short of amazing, but it potentially could have ended off a bit stronger. Also, I would have liked to see a little bit more involvement from that big warrior balloon that's on the track's thumbnail. It's just kind of in the background and doesn't really serve any purpose. As I said though, this track is just a grand adventure, which a track like this 100% should be, and it delivers. Rank 22 is Grumble Volcano. Oh my god, they removed the rock hop. 0 out of 10 track, 0 out of 10 game. I'm going back to playing MKWE. Yeah, I mean, jokes aside though, this track is very good. Of course, Grumble has always had the extremely cool gimmick of parts of the track falling off every lap, and that even allows you to do a pretty cool turn skip shortcut, which is exclusive to the end of lap 3 because of said gimmick, which I mean is pretty nice. The cave section with the two optional paths is also pretty nice. There's something pretty similar to that at the end of the track, with them actually adding a glider section to the left path. Kind of a shame it's like 10 times slower though and almost gets no use in the slightest. Although there actually was a good addition of a glider section on this track on the moving platforms, which is actually faster than I see myself using most of the time. And them adding a double box to the slower wider ramp on the last set of items was pretty smart. Actually being able to give that ramp a good bit of use. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, Grumble Volcano is actually a pretty simple track and I don't have much to talk about and is pretty faithful 
disregarding all the ultra shortcuts, obviously. I honestly don't mind that so much, though, as this track played very well on the Wii, and that's more so the case for this game as well. And I feel it especially plays well in a competitive setting, which is why I personally have this track pretty decently high up. On that note, my favourite thing has got to be how both of the off-road shortcuts are not easy to take in the slightest. They're quite easy to fail, and you need to know how to do both of them properly. Yeah, I just really like Grumble Volcano, and I really like how it plays online too. Not much more needs to be said, really. Okay, and finally, the last track of A tier is rank 21, Rosalina's Ice World. Now, as far as I remember, this was like the only track that we didn't already know was coming to Wave 6 when the trailer dropped. But to be honest, I'm very glad it did because this is definitely a very forgotten track on one of the more unmemorable Mario Karts. That is actually very good, and it's got its chance to show that on 8 Deluxe. Okay, if you've been paying attention to the video, you'll have remembered that I'm not entirely the biggest fan of really narrow sections of the track. And while that big long turn at the start of Rosalina's Ice World just absolutely takes the cake. Yeah, I kind of hate this section. I am not lying to you when I say there is no wiggle room here. And again, if there is a bomb in front of you, that's just kind of GG's. I mean, the fact is at the very start of the track is much better than if it were to be at the very end, at least. But I mean, yeah, it's just really not all that fun to me. Fortunately, that aside, I pretty much love every single other part of this track. My favourite has got to be the Ice Lake section, especially since if you're good enough, you can get a well-timed mini turbo trick on laps 2 and 3 to make it onto the faster top path without a shroom. That is quickly followed by a split path option, one being the faster option on the right with boost panels, the other being a tiny bit slower but with the trade-off of 3 coins being available to you, which is pretty decent. They also added a shortcut on the last turn, which I think is a good addition, can make the very end of the track just that little bit more exciting. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if we disregard the long, narrow turn at the start, which I have a burning hatred for, this track is pretty amazing and doesn't really have any flaws to me. It's a pretty faithful one, so pretty much all of my opinions on 8 Deluxe carried over from 7. And that's just about all I have to say. If that damn narrow section at the very start didn't exist, this track just might have been perfect. Right, now moving on to S tier in the top 20, these are going to be elite tracks and I'm really going to run out of bad things to say about basically any of them. I don't really think much more explaining is needed beyond that. So I mean, yeah, let's take a look at S tier. Okay, to start things off with S tier, rank 20 is Cooper Cape. It was by this point in the booster course pass that the favouritism Nintendo was showing towards the Wii fans was made very apparent. And with the case of Cooper Cape alongside Coconut Mall, Mushroom Gorge, and Maple Treeway, this was our third time in a row seeing these tracks. And I maybe would have preferred to see some Wii tracks that haven't been brought back before if they were going to favour this game so much. But I mean, disregarding that, we still have to face the facts that Cooper Cape is an excellent track. The start of this one isn't really anything special. It has a boost ramp, some goombas, and a shortcut, but it really starts to get interesting for me at the water stream section. What I love about this part of the track is just how many options it gives you. You can either go wide and get an item box from under the giant shell, or go wide and get a couple of coins from the natural arc. There are plenty of grass cuts for you to take advantage of if you have mushrooms, or you can just take the regular line across the water stream, trying to catch the item boxes moving along it. And then that's quickly followed by the underwater section, which, yes, I will admit, them removing the massive spinning tasers that would shrink you down does kind of suck, as they provided a nice challenge and always made the section of the track a lot more exhilarating for me. Although, the underwater section isn't so bad in my books, as I really like how they implemented the half pipe here, with the half pipe being the only place to get an item box at the end of the lap. It basically gives you the choice of either staying tight of the half pipe, which is faster with the downside of not getting an item, and of course vice versa, you can either go on the half pipe getting an item box, but with the downside that it's a little bit slower than just skipping the item set altogether. It implements a good bit of strategy, which I really, really like. And finally, at the very end, there is the water stream shortcut, which you're supposed to shroom through in MKWE. But I mean, in this game, it was just absolutely nerfed into the ground. It isn't even a shroom cut at this point. It's just kind of a water stream you drive through. But honestly, I can't really say I have too much of an issue with this. It makes this track a little bit better for front running, which I mean, it's pretty cool. Other than that, the only noticeable thing to talk about is the soundtrack changes for the water stream section, the underwater section, and the regular track, which which you've got to appreciate the efforts. And I mean, at the end of the day, Cooper Cape is just as excellent as it was on the Wii, but please don't bring it back for the fourth time in a row. I'm getting a little bit tired of it now. Rank 19 is Dolphin Shoals. This track was by far the best underwater track in the game for me, right up until a certain one in Wave 6 release, which we'll talk about soon enough. But undoubtedly, Dolphin Shoals is still excellent. I actually really, really like the ramps at the very start of the track. Since Boost Tricks underwater,
also save you practically no time if you're midair. In this section of the track, it's much faster to get low tricks off the ramps, so you actually get the trick boost on the ground, which is pretty satisfying to do, and does take a good bit of skill. Then we get to the massive underwater section, with pipes pushing you up, giving you a whole four different ways to go about going through this section, which I always love me a bit of diversity in my tracks. And then we get to the giant eel, which I have such mixed feelings on. On the one hand, as a competitive player, I'm always trying to do what's most optimal, and it's most optimal to shake the life out of your controller to get as many tricks as possible off the eel's back, which can be a little bit annoying. On the other hand, getting those perfect eel tricks is just satisfying and feels really good. So overall, the eel is okay. It can have its moments, I guess. Now we get to talk about my favorite part, though, being the glider at the end, and more specifically, the motion glider. This one has got to be my favorite out of the main three tracks in which you do motion glider on. It's for two main reasons. It's probably the hardest one to do, and also by far the most satisfying looking one to pull off. Every time I'm playing this track, this is the part which I'm looking forward to the most. Other than that, of course, I'll state the obvious in which the soundtrack is amazing. And yeah, this track is just excellent, and I especially enjoy doing the motion glider. Rank 18 is Ribbon Road. Now, this is how you do a GBA remake. They took a track from Super Circuit, which was generally one of the more forgotten ones, and turned it into a completely unforgettable one on this game. And how did they do that, you might be asking? Well, they went ahead and turned the entire track into a toy set in a kid's bedroom. At the very start of the track, if you pay attention to what's in front of you, you can see the box that the Ribbon Road toy set came in. And then other than that, there are loads of stuff added into the background and around the track in general. Instead of the regular toads in the background, you've got toy wobbly toads, which for sure gives the track bonus points. There are Mecha Koopas walking around as a very fitting track obstacle. And also for some reason, there's a Kung Fu Panda reference in the background. I guess the Kung Fu Lakitu trilogy must exist in the Nintendo universe. So I mean, that's pretty cool, I guess. Honestly, there is so much detail put into this kid's bedroom that if I talked about everything, we'd just probably be here all day. So I implore you to go and have a look around this track yourself. There are many things you've probably passed by and missed in a race before. Just go and appreciate the attention to detail on this one. And on how fun this track actually is to drive. I mean, yeah, it's pretty good. The main two things I want to highlight would be firstly, the anti-gravity section. I feel it's a decently challenging section, especially with the two optional shroomless cuts you can take, providing a pretty nice risk reward factor. And secondly, the large amount of off-road shortcuts on this track can't really go unnoticed. With how many there are, it makes this track not so good to front run, but it's nowhere near as bad as Cheese Land or Dry Dry Desert. So having that catcher potential basically means you're almost never out of it on this track, which can make for some decently exciting races. Again, I have said this before, but it's mad to me that they made this a paid DLC on their worst ever selling console, and I'm so glad a track of this quality got its chance to shine to many more people on a much better selling console. Rank 17 is Bowser's Castle 3. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you do an SNES remake. In fact, in my opinion, I think this is probably the best one we've ever had. For example, let's compare what I think is the second best SNES track in the game, DP3, to this one. What did they do to DP3 in this game? You can drive underwater and it looks nice. It's pretty cool, I guess. Now, what did they do to BC3? Change the track theme into going up a giant lava dam, which is sick, and a very good implementation of anti-gravity at that. It gave the multiple different routes on multiple occasions have their own benefits and downsides, which I really like. And finally, added genuinely very good track obstacles that are fitting with the track. Long story short, the remake of this track feels nothing like it was on the SNES, which is a very, very good thing considering the hardware we have now. The standard should be for the tracks to be revolutionized. And of course, as I said, thanks to the multiple different ways to go about driving this track and the very good track obstacles, driving this one is always an absolute blast. So in summary, as a wise man called Rookie once said, Nintendo, please never make a faithful SNES remake ever again. Rank 16 is Piranha Plant Pipeway. And yes, I'm going to use the real name for it. Anyway, with this track, it was certainly one of the best on Mario Kart 7. They spiced it up with some of 8's graphics and it's one of the best in this game. This one one just does a whole lot right and honestly not anything wrong. Good track obstacles with the Goombas and most notably the Piranha Plant blocking a ramp shortcut at the very start of the track. The driving is excellent, especially with the water stream at the very beginning of the track. And the fact there is kind of some platforming with the floating blocks you can do, which is actually faster if you're able to stay on top of them. So that's pretty cool. And the end of the track is excellent with a glider section going upwards and a grass cut at the very last turn, adding some very much needed catch up potential and having a 
shroom for this cart can really clutch up for you at the end of a race. I can't really say I have much more to say about this track. I mean, not much changed, and it's just as amazing as it was on the 3DS. In general, that is the case for a lot of returning MK7 tracks. They just picked out the best ones, including a certain Toad-themed one, and not much needed to be changed about any of them, really. So, uh, yeah, Prana Plant Pipeway is pretty cool. Rank 15 is Big Blue. In terms of a finale track, Big Blue is just absolutely leagues ahead of Wii Rainbow Road, in my opinion. And this one is also by far my favorite three-section track in the base game. My actual favorite three-section track we'll get onto soon enough. Very soon, in fact. Yeah, as a three-section track, though, Big Blue is just giving you an insane amount of things to do. There are loads of different routes for you to choose on every single lap. Plenty of boost panels to try and catch. My favorite thing out of all of them has got to be how much you can take advantage of the floaty physics on this track. It allows you to do what used to be the biggest shortcut in the game on section 2 on 200cc. I mean, still to this day is insanely satisfying to pull off. And you can even do a slightly watered down version of it on 150cc, which is pretty nice. And finally, near the end of section 3, you can use the switching paths a little bit to your advantage to do some pretty cool turn skips. This track to me would certainly be a lot worse if the floaty physics weren't there. Also, of course it goes without saying, but the implementation of anti-gravity on this track is nothing short of phenomenal. I especially like the beginning of section 3. Going across the conveyor belts, you can see the ocean gradually turn to be right above your head, which is visually pretty cool. I do have one problem though, which is a bit of a competitive nitpick, but it's the fact that when you play this track, your race almost always completely depends on the cannon set. It's nowhere near as bad as the one on Rainbow Road 8, as you only go through this one one time, but even so, it's towards the end of the race, so sometimes no matter how well you do or how well you play, if you don't get the the right item from this item set is just kind of over for you. So this track from a competitive setting could be a little bit better, but in fairness that doesn't really take away from the fact that this track is amazingly put together and is always a fun time to drive and just kind of experience really. Rank 14 is Waluigi Stadium. The first thing I want to mention is that the quality of this track is outstanding and I know there was a massive wait up until this track was released in Wave 4 for a GameCube track, but I'm actually very very glad that we did wait this long because if this was a wave one track this might have looked god awful so i for one think it was well worth the wait since the few gcn tracks that they did add into the booster course pass have been very very high quality but yeah waluigi stadium is excellent as it was on both the gamecube and the wii and it's made even better by the few anti-gravity top paths that they added they're not actually faster so in terms of driving the track they're not the best but i mean it's better than not having them i suppose what i love about this track the most though is how technical the driving is most notably with the extremely sharp turns on this track and doing the big shroom shortcuts without a shroom by driving on the small strip of road to the left and also taking full advantage of the half pipes right after. In terms of track obstacles, there isn't really any good ones unless you count the spinning fireballs, which I tend to find pretty easy to avoid. I'd say what makes this track challenging, as I've said, is the layout and how technical the driving is. You really need to be good on this one to succeed. I don't have much more to say. The track looks stunning, plays excellently, and especially in competitive play, I always have a really fun time playing this one. Rank 13 is Mushroom Gorge. I'm gonna be completely straight up, this track would probably be like B tier if the gap jump wasn't in the game. Like, don't get me wrong, driving on this one is super fun, and doing all the super bouncing tech is still great, but if I'm honest, I'm always looking forward to the gap jump in a race. That's all that ever really matters. On the topic of driving this track though, I actually like it quite a lot. As I said, there's a lot of super bouncing with the abundance of mushrooms on this track, of course, which makes this probably one of the most unique tracks to drive in the game. I especially like the cave section and the split path option this offers. Going left is slower, but it provides you with two items, and going to the right is faster, but you only get one item. A simple but pretty effective split path option. In a sense, it ties into the gap jump very nicely since this section comes right before it. In some cases, if you don't have a mushroom for the gap jump already, it might be worth it to go the slower left path for a higher chance at getting one from an item box. Yeah, on the topic of the gap jump though, it's just so cool to me. Saving so much time and being right at the end of each lap is nothing short of prime clip material. And it also makes the way you play this track in terms of item management extremely unique too. Because trust me when I say you need a mushroom for this gap shortcut, especially on lap three because it saves that much time. It's even common for the guy in first place to drop out really hard just so they have a better chance of getting a mushroom for the gap jump. Honestly, the super bouncers in the cave section are pretty cool, but at the end of the day, I just kind of love Mushroom Gorge, mostly for the gap jump. It's one of the most iconic shortcuts in the series, and I'm extremely extremely happy that Nintendo left it in the booster course pass. Rank 12 is Madrid Drive. Finally, we've gotten to what is my favorite tour track and my favorite multiple different sections track. And I've got 
gotta say, I might be the only one with this opinion because Madrid is not often ranked that highly from the ranking videos that I've seen, which I guess I can't really understand because to me, this track is just an absolute pleasure to play every time. Now, in terms of visuals, I've got to say this is a very close second to Rome out of all the city tracks. In general, to me, the Wave 6 city tracks just kind of clear out all the others. Nintendo just really saved the best for last. Yeah, the main reason I like this track, though, every single section of the track contains something that I love and next to no bad things about it. And I'll break it down lap by lap. Lap 1 introduces us into the plaza, but this section of the track comes into play later. That's quickly followed by what is supposed to be the Madrid train station, from what my research tells me, which has an extremely cool and actually pretty challenging to pull off shroomless cut. And right after that comes a small museum. This section is quite literally only five seconds long, but it has its own soundtrack, which I mean is pretty cool and you have to respect the effort for that to be honest. On lap two, we get to a small market section with some thwomps making for some decent track obstacles. And then we get back to the plaza, in which this time you're perfectly lined up to do a really cool shortcut, where you can just squeeze through the chairs and the tables to skip a turn. I adore how hidden in plain sight this one is and how satisfying it was for me when I first found it. And to end off lap two is a pretty cool glider section with a nice grass cut you can take advantage of via gliding over the fence if you're able to stay high enough. And finally on lap three, it only has one thing to talk about and it's probably the one thing that carries the entire track of the rankings for me. And that is the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. With me being a pretty big football fan, one of the most iconic football stadiums being in my favorite ever game, 8 Deluxe, is just extremely cool to me and feels like some kind of weird Fortnite collab and I just absolutely love it and the driving inside the stadium is actually pretty good with you having to go for boost panels while at the same time having to avoid the footballs being kicked around it's a short but pretty exhilarating section of the track and I also adore what they did on the sidelines. It looks like there's kind of a Toad versus Yoshi derby going on. And I'd have to take the assumption that the Toads are the home team. Because I'm seeing a severe lack of Yoshis in the crowd. So I guess now we know in the Nintendo universe, Real Madrid are a squad of Toads. And I guess if this is a derby, I guess maybe the Yoshis are Barcelona or Atletico Madrid or something. Yeah, I only really have good things to say about this track. It's just an absolute pleasure to play every time. And by far the most entertaining city course in the game for me. Vamos! Rank 11 is Toad Harbor. If I had to live in any track from this game, it would probably be this one, I'm not gonna lie. But alongside looking like a nice place to live, Toad Harbor is an absolutely outstanding track. This one just absolutely excels in giving you multiple different ways to go about driving it. In fact, there is not a single part of this track that doesn't have multiple different paths available to you, in which there are five different occasions where the track gives you multiple different ways to go about it. The only one that's maybe not that notable is the tram tracks just to the right of the finish line. Not much reason to go there unless you're trying to get an item box or maybe avoid enemy players, but it gets much better at the very beginning of the track. When you're met with loads of options, you can risk taking the ramps on the left or on the right, you can just take the regular road. And then straight after that, you can either stay on the bottom path or you can choose to drive on top of the tent roofs. And then that is immediately followed by the choice of either going on the risky, narrow, but faster top path or playing it safe and staying on the slow, but safer bottom path, which also has the benefit of giving you a double item box. And then after that, there's an anti-gravity path, which I mean is cool, but it's kind of just slower, not very useful. But I mean, hey, if you're feeling a bit tipsy-turvy, then that's there for you. And finally is the massive straightaway at the end, just giving you so many ways to go about it. You can take the ramps on the right, the boost ramps in the middle, or the boost pads on the left. And even at the very end of it, there's a small alleyway you can take, which is slower, but you get a few extra coins from it, so it's not too bad. Yeah, what I love about this track, though, firstly, it's a Toad-themed track, so I'm going to be shamelessly biased towards it. But even still, secondly, I'm just generally a massive fan of tracks that give you an abundance of different ways to go about it, and Toad Harbor just absolutely nails that for me. Okay, we're officially getting into the top 10. Very exciting. And to kick that off is rank 10, Twisted Mansion. I think out of all the tracks in the top 10, Twisted Mansion is probably the most simple one, but I don't really mind that so much because it's simple but extremely effective and plays excellently in a competitive setting, in my opinion, which has pretty high value to me. The starting section with the two split paths is extremely good, especially when starting out the race on lap one. It can be very strategic since you're going to want to secure an item box to hopefully get a mushroom for the upcoming shortcuts and also potentially be on a path with less players to avoid getting 
hit out by a potential item being trailed or something. And then in the underwater section, there are two almost identical paths, but the left path is slightly faster, but sometimes it's worth it just to take the right path in case the enemy players are holding some threatening items next to you, like triple greens or something. Again, that's more strategy. And lastly, after the glider, you have the option between the much faster top path or the way slower bottom path. While the top path is faster, it's extremely narrow and by far one of the most chaotic sections in the game. While the bottom path isn't as useful as any of the other optional routes I've discussed because of how much slower it is, but I'd say because of the sheer chaos that happens on the top path, it means the bottom path can rarely be worth going down and have a slight niche towards it. The last track we just talked about has absolutely shown my liking for tracks that give you split path options. As I've said, it just adds that little bit more strategy to tracks that I really, really like. I just really enjoy Twisted Mansion and it's always been an extremely fun one to play, especially in a competitive setting, which gives it bonus points for me. Rank nine is Music Park. This track is the exact same case as Piranha Plant Pipeway. It was excellent on the 3DS, next to nothing changed about it. And I mean, quite frankly, nothing really needed to. It was excellent on seven. Surprise, surprise, give it a dash of eight graphics. And it's also excellent on this game. And to be honest, I really have to give the visuals credit here. Almost everything on this track, whether it's in the background or implemented into the actual track itself, is always music related. Like the viewers in the background, which are usually toads or shy guys, are now these cute little music notes. You can also see plenty of trumpets, speakers, and note blocks, which are very fitting to the theme. Now actually driving on the track, you go over a piano and a xylophone, which you can actually play them while driving over them, which I mean, that's pretty cool. You go past piranha plants, bopping to the track's music. You can bounce over some drums. And at the end of the track is my favorite part, a big section of the track with some massive music notes, serving as a very good track obstacle, but also will jump to the beat of the track's music. And if you're listening and time it correctly, you can actually get a trick when they land. And of course, since the music is faster on lap three, they speed up. It's such a cool and creative way of them to take advantage of the music theme in my opinion. Yeah, Music Park is just an absolute joy to play and it really feels like they included as many music related things as they possibly could. I can say for certain that this track 100% deserved the call up to a home console. Rank 8 is Wario Stadium. This track is just kind of nuts and the reason for that is that this track is by far the best front running track in the game and also definitely takes the most skill. So let's go over every single bit of technical driving that you can do on this track. Immediately on the first turn, if you're skilled enough, you can just squeeze out an ultra mini turbo. Next is a boost ramp in which if you're able to, you can get a launch trick off, which saves a good chunk of time. Next is the four small boost ramps, which you can just drive over or make room for a mini turbo going over the last ramp for a time save. Then we get to what is the most iconic bit of tech, which are the ramp strats, which yeah, is pretty satisfying to pull off. And at the very end of the track, you can do an air hop off the first boost ramp and squeeze out some mini turbos to do some glider strats at the end. And I mean, yeah, this is probably the most technical track track in the game to drive and that's why i absolutely love it driving this track in the front absolutely never fails to please me the only issue i do have with this track is that if you're not in the front being in the mid pack is extremely chaotic and spammy especially with how narrow parts of the track are but for me personally it doesn't really bring the track down that much since for me this is probably one of the most fun tracks to drive in the game both online and in time trials and of course i'll give credit to both the underwater and the anti-gravity sections spicing up this track a good bit and making it a good bit better than its DS counterparts. So long story short, Wario Stadium is extremely fun and technical to drive and that's why me and many other top players really really like it. Rank 7 is DK Summit. Man this track is just so unbelievably jank and broken and that's why I absolutely love it. Especially since if you're actually good at this track you can play around how jank it is in general and it can really pull through for you. Firstly we'll talk about what is my favorite part of the track being the cannon item set at the very start of the track, which in my opinion works much better than the ones on Big Blue and Rainbow Road. The problem with the other two, their broken item sets are at the end of the track and you can't stop on the items, meaning it's completely a dice roll on how your race will fare at the end. On the other hand, with DK Summit, it's at the very start, so it's not going to completely dictate your race. And most of the time being able to stop on the items gives you a little bit more control over what you pull and actually makes you think a little bit more whether it's actually worth to stop for two items or just keep on going for a singular item. Also, the driving on this track is just absolutely amazing. The kind of weird double shortcuts in the half pipes were a little bit weird to get used to at first, but once I did, man, does this track feel so smooth to drive. Especially the half pipes feel so good in this game, and I don't really think they get enough 
credit. And of course, the double shortcut is very cool too. It's a lot easier than it was on MK Wii, but in this game, it's more so about how fast you can do it as opposed to being able to do it at all. And I used to not like the snow bumps on this track being really big as compared to the ones on Mount Wario, but I've actually come around to like them since you need to know how to take them properly to take full advantage of them. When I first played DK Summit, I really didn't like it, especially with how different the driving is compared to basically any other track in the game. But after properly learning it, it's become one of my mainstay favorites and is always a regular pick for me when I'm playing online. Okay, and to top off S tier, rank 6 is Yoshi's Island. I have to say, Nintendo's most recent booster course pass slash tour original tracks, disregarding the real life city ones, have absolutely knocked it out of the park for me. In fact, out of all the BCP slash tour original tracks, Yoshi's Island is the fourth best one in my list, and it's sixth best out of every single track in the game. That's just a little bit mad to think about. But yeah, Yoshi's Island is absolutely amazing. I've never actually played a Yoshi game in my life, but this track is 100% giving me a very good impression on it. And I've got to say from the little Yoshi's Island knowledge that I have, they have definitely nailed the aesthetic down exceptionally well, especially with how in general cartoony they made the track look. There's just so much stuff to look at on this track that I'd be here all day if I talked about all of it. But to shorten it down, my favorites I'd have to say are the Shy Guys on the stilts, they're pretty funny. The castle in the small cave section look quite nice, especially with the gems inside blowing up the place a little bit and of course getting to glide right over the volcano onto the cloud section is pretty cool now we get to what is the highlight of the track for me see driving on this track is by no means anything special it's pretty simplistic with the occasional shroom cut here and there what it really comes down to is accessing the hidden top path at the end by hitting the question mark cloud on the glider this part of the track is what makes it so especially good to me and certainly what makes this track unique it also adds a good bit of strategy that you might not have realized Sure, hitting the cloud is good because you get to drive over the shortcuts, which is much faster. But what if you have mushrooms and the other players around you don't? In that case, it might be worth hoping the other players around you miss the cloud so you can save time over them by taking the shortcuts at the end. So pretty simply, the main two reasons I love Yoshi's Island is because it's just full of life and a pleasure to look at. And playing this track, especially thanks to the cloud, feels extremely unique and fun. Okay, finally, here we are. The top five being double S tier. These are just the best of the best in my opinion, and definitely the tracks I'm gonna look forward to talking about the most. So without further ado, let's get this ranking video done and let's talk about the top five best tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. For the fifth best track in the game, I've gone for Ninja Hideaway. Disregarding the very obvious candidates, this was by far the highlight of Wave 1. And I've always known about this track being in tour, and it's always looked pretty decent to me. But I never truly realized how good this track really was until I got to experience it in 8 Deluxe. This track just feels like such a maze with the abundance of different routes it offers. And that is likely the reason out of any BCP track, this one took me by far the longest to learn. That's just what I absolutely love about it though, in a sense. I I kind of missed when I first played this track with a bunch of my mates and everyone was just everywhere because we had absolutely no idea where we were going most of the time. But once I did finally get the track down, it became super fun and technical to drive. You get a ton of trick opportunities off places you might not have thought were possible. For me, that would have been the pond at the very beginning and some of the roof bumps near the end. The glider ramp on the top path is definitely super cool, providing you with four coins and a double item box, making it by far the most useful optional path you can take. And I really like how you have to actually time tricking off the moving platform to even access this path at all. And the last noteworthy thing to talk about is the shroomless shortcuts, which is extremely unique to the track, having to hit the wall while in a super mini turbo boost to destroy the cardboard cutout without spinning out from it. When this was first discovered, it was kind of weird at first because we'd never seen anything like it, but it became pretty fun to pull off once everyone got used to it. And to this day, it's still super satisfying and decently challenging to pull off. And I'm not that big on 200cc, but there is a really cool shortcut at the end you can do without a mushroom, so I thought I'd give that a shout. Yeah, Ninja Hideaway is awesome, and definitely, in my opinion, and probably many others, the definite standout of Wave 1. Well, I mean, that's if we're disregarding uh, you-know-who.
for the fourth best track in the game, I've gone for 3DS Rainbow Road. Honestly, this track has been praised so much, it's going to be like beating a dead horse. But I mean, hey, it's a ranking video, so I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, this track is just amazing. It's a multiple section track, always giving you stuff to do. And it even plays around with the concept of being in space a little bit by implementing planets into the track itself. Kind of like what this game's Rainbow Road did with the whole space station theme. Only difference being is I actually enjoy playing 3DS Rainbow Road as opposed to 8 Rainbow Road. From start to finish, this track just feels like an absolute adventure. And I feel the music complements that feeling extremely well. The driving is by no means that challenging, but in my opinion, it doesn't feel dull in the slightest and entertains me to a point where the fact that the track isn't that challenging, which is usually what I want from a Rainbow Road, doesn't affect my enjoyment for the track all that much. Each section of the track is giving you really cool stuff to do though. Lap 1 has you driving around mini planets with a bunch of cool ramp strats you can do. Lap 2 has you driving around the rings of Saturn, which is sick, quickly followed by a massive jump onto the moon, which funnily enough, the moon is 10 times bigger than any of the other planets on the track, which is slightly amusing to me. And lastly, section 3 is arguably the coolest glider section in the entire game, and you don't even have to take the glider. It's actually faster not to do that. But I mean, if you want to take the scenic routes, then I definitely recommend the glider on that one. Yeah, I think in terms of a finale track in the Mario Kart series, this one 100% takes the cake. Just an absolutely outstanding one. For the third best track in the game, I've gone for Piranha Plant Cove. So yeah, this is definitely the best underwater theme track, not only in the game, but in the series, in my opinion. Now, I won't lie, at first I really didn't like this track, mainly due to how weird the underwater physics felt. But funnily enough, after properly learning the track and having played it a while now, the underwater physics have become probably my favourite thing about it. And the main reason for this is that the floaty underwater physics allow for an abundance of skill-based shortcuts to be done for to be exact. Some of the less notable ones would be the small turn skips at the start of lap one and in the middle of lap two, and also being able to do the lap three shroom shortcuts without a shroom, which is pretty cool, but doesn't save enough time to actually be worth it. Now, the shortcut I'd like to highlight is the massive shroom cut on lap one, being able to launch yourself just far enough to get a drift off the right side wall, and then using the underwater physics to your advantage to float over the rock and save a huge amount of time. This one is extremely satisfying to pull off because of how decently challenging it is. And I also like the fact that it's nearer to the start of the race, because that means that there is still a lot of benefit to making the shortcuts, but your entire race isn't going to depend on it, which I like quite a lot. So yeah, if you couldn't tell already, I think the driving on this track is an absolute blast. And looking at this track is just as good because this track is straight up stunning. Maybe bar the city tracks, I don't think there's a single Wave 6 track that isn't base game quality. And Piranha Plant Cove is just a prime example of that. Yeah, this track gave me a pretty bad first impression, but over time, very clearly, it has grown on me a lot. Yeah, Piranha Plant Cove is really good and definitely the best ever underwater theme track, in my opinion. Huge props. For the second best track in the game, I've gone for TikTok Clock. This track has always been a favourite of mine. I've never actually played the DS version, but from what I've seen, the 8DX version just looks absolutely leagues better. What I absolutely love about this track is what they did with the theming. This track is very obviously themed around cogworks inside of a clock, and the way they designed the track, they really wanted to emphasise that. Almost everything implemented into the track itself is clock themed. The finish line is an alarm clock right after the item boxes are some pendulums, trying to block your path, making for a very good track obstacle. Then there are spinning cogs, providing you with trick opportunities in which you have to time correctly. And finally is my favourite bit being the clock hands, allowing for some of the best shortcuts in the entire game to be done. What makes the clock hands even better to me is the fact that if you drive fast enough, it's completely possible for you to skip the last turn via the clock hands on all three laps. That's mainly what makes this track, in my opinion, the most fun track in the game game to drive, and also one of the most skill-based. So if you put the hours into the track, it can become a real advantage for you. The overall design that was put into this silly little clock track is nothing short of outstanding. They added so many little details to make the track look absolutely stunning, and also implemented little clock-themed things within the track itself to make it, in my opinion, the most fun track in the entire game to drive. Whenever I get first, this is always the track I'm picking. Now, without further ado, let's find out what could possibly top this one.
Yeah, I really, really like the toilet track. So yeah, in my opinion, I think that squeaky clean sprint is the best track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I mean, in a competitive sense, I'd probably say that Piranha Plant Cove and TikTok Clock are the ever so slightest bit better as they take a little bit more skill to play. But in terms of general personal enjoyment and track creativity, squeaky clean sprint just absolutely takes the crown for me. So pretty much this track is just a giant bathroom, but they went to absolute lengths to make as many bathroom related things as possible relevant in the track itself. Now, how does this track start off? Immediately going into a water filled sink and a bath equipped with everything you'd need, hand wash, hair mousse, got some toothbrushes and toothpaste lying around. Yeah, I'll say it now, this definitely is not the cleanest bathroom in the world. And then you get to go into the giant bath, which has the recognizable rubber duck floating on top and also some round random Goomba for some reason. Guess he just needed a wash. And then we actually get to go down the drain pipe in which there are more toothbrushes lying around, a wedding ring, and even a mechanical fish. Yeah, whoever owns this bathroom really needs to have a tidy up, I'm not gonna lie. And then we get to a soap filled section with a fan pushing you back, which I'm not gonna lie. This fan was extremely annoying to me at first, but I've gotten used to it and it doesn't make a single difference to my opinion of the track anymore. It even arguably makes it better because you need to know how to play around it properly. Now we get to the best part of the track though, being the glider section. Lap 1 is okay, you land on the bottom path always, having some towels you can drive over and a pretty big shortcut for some catch-up potential. But it gets really interesting on lap 2 and onwards. This is when you get the marvellous opportunity of tricking off of the dirty toilet water to access the top path, in which the glider gives you a whole three new ways of driving the starting section. Now, granted they're all slower and it's not all that good, but two of them have the benefit of it being your only way of getting a double box at the start. So it's not too bad and they have their uses. I mean, yeah, this track is so whimsical, magical, and creative. And it's even super fun to drive having a really cool turn skip you can do in the drain pipe section. Honestly, if I went into every single bit of detail they put into this bathroom, I would probably be here all day. It's kind of like Ribbon Road, but on steroids. But yeah, this track has just never failed to please me. This track is extremely fun in a competitive setting. I'm always excited when it gets picked. And even when I'm just playing it casually, and admiring the track for what it is. It is a super fun time. Okay, that's it finally. 96 tracks finished. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, I'd highly appreciate it if you liked and subscribed as this video took nothing short of months to make. And well, with all the rankings done and my biggest secret of Toad Circuit actually not being my favorite track in the game, finally out. I think it's about time that I ended this extensively long video. So I'll see you in the next one in a bit, lads. Bye-bye.